as a Gadigal community elder, it is my role to welcome you all onto Gadigal country. My name is Nana Miss Clurry, Red Fern's very own First Nations drag queen. I pay my respect to our pioneers, people that have paved the way for me. First Nations people are not just the oldest living culture in Australia. We are the oldest continuous living culture in the world. And that is something for each and every one of us to be proud of. I welcome each and every one of you onto Gadigal country. I wish you safety on your stay. And I wish you happiness on your journeys home. I would like to welcome you back to Oxford Street for Mardi Gras 45th anniversary. Happy Mardi Gras. Live from Taylor Square on Oxford Street in Sydney for the first time in three years, it's the 45th Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras! <laughs> it is loud. I'm Nate Byrne. I'm Mon Shafter. And I'm the effervescent Jack Evans. And yes, this is my natural hair. <laughs> and Sydney is packed with queer folk from right across the globe. And look how close we are. I mean, you can see the... Well, actually, it's just finished. The, the last of the dogs on bikes and the boys on bikes. This is a... Huge it's incredible! Oh, <laughs> Hello. Hello! Happy Mardi Gras! Oh, Happy Mardi Gras! Gras. Oh, is that my mum? Oh. What are you wearing? <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. You just oh. got us up so you could show off your shoes, right? <laughs> Guilty. Tonight we'll be bringing you all the action from the Golden Mile on its night of nights and a few stories from our queer community around the country. And we're well underway. The bikes have just are coming down and before that the First Nations traditional owners have welcomed the punters onto Gadigal country. And we are not alone at all in the three of us being here. Down in the marshalling area, it's everyone's favourite Brizzy Martin. Mel Buttle. And out on Taylor Square, just behind us, it's ABC News reporter Jeremy Fernandez and actor, muso and play school presenter, Cynthia Kenyo. Hey. Hello, guys. Oh, team, this what is a epic. vibe. I'm so happy to be here. It's incredible. Yeah, it, it is so wild, the noise as the, the bikes race down the street. Hey, uh, Mel. This is your first ever Mardi Gras, right? I, I'm hoping you can hear me. How, how come it took you so long to come? Well, actually, that is a lie. I have been here before. I just never marched before, but now I'm in the thick of it and I'm feeling great. And how about the energy of this crowd? You know what? It's been three years since they were on Oxford Street oh. and I think they're pretty happy. Look at them. They love being on TV. They love being back on Oxford Street. The bikes just went past. Oh, we're still Couldn't feeling the energy. No, but we're all cares? just running on adrenaline, right? That's <laughs> so great. Awesome. And Zinzi and Jeremy, we're looking forward to chatting with you later on in the night to see how we're all tracking. But team, happy Mardi Gras. Oh, happy wait. Mardi Gras. Team, we've been lucky enough to have a little insight into some of the floats this year. Um, any that you're particularly looking forward to seeing, guys? There is a one big purple nudie branch, which is a kind of slug that's going to be sliming its way down the oh, down Oxford Street, down the parade route. Can't wait for that. You know me. Anything nerdy and sciencey, I'm on board. For me, it's drag kings. Oh. I hear they're trying to break a record tonight. Most number of drag kings gathered in one spot. Oh. It's going to be cool. Well, that's pretty exciting. Can't wait to see it happen. So it seems we're still waiting on the parade to start. As we mentioned earlier, Sydney is buzzing with queers from all over the globe. It's just absolutely epic. We're right here on Taylor Square on Oxford Street where the first Mardi Gras began 45 years ago, June 24th, 1978. Right over there, 500 queers assembled. It was supposed to be a nighttime festival, a celebration of queer queerness. Um, they marched down Oxford Street, down that way towards Hyde Park. Didn't, wasn't as joyful as they had actually intended that night. Um, police came, they shut down the parade, there was some violence. Um, it wasn't great, but from that, our modern day LGBTQIA movement was born, and we owe it to those 78ers. 
And 45 years later, look at it now. Yes, the energy is electric. It could fuel an electric car. <laughs> if only I had one. Yeah, by the way, here they come again. The Dykes on bikes, just traditionally always leading the parade. It's, it's that wall down Oxford Street. Isn't, isn't that just like a clear person's call to arms? Oh, so Here we go. About oh, to start. I would love to ride with him. I ride a motor scooter. That's a bit soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you've got to toughen that up a bit. But hey, Jack, if you wanted to get involved as well, it's not just the dykes, of course. Oh. But the boys on bikes oh. as well. Well, I wouldn't mind riding a boy on a bike. Wait, is that what you said? <laughs> no, not kind of. Oh, quite okay, like that. Sorry. <laughs> too far off either. So the parade's running a little bit late, but while we wait, one of the groups who have travelled here tonight is Tropical Fruits. And you might know Tropical Fruits as an annual New Year's Eve party in Lismore in the northern rivers of New South Wales. But the community group is giving much more to the locals than just a New Year's Eve kiss. Take a look. We're pretty lucky to have one of the largest LGBTIQ communities outside of a major city. Moving to a regional town, having a sense of community is one of the things that, that draws someone like me to it. To have people in the town that you know and that care about you, that's pretty special to have. And I think in the last couple of years, it's become more and more important with COVID and the natural disasters we've experienced here. Having had two major floods, Sydney World Pride is a really important opportunity for connection and fun outside of flood recovery. And also after the floods, we found a lot of our community has scattered due to limited accommodation and services. So it's an opportunity for us to come back together and march as one. Since the floods, we've had a lot of people making handmade heart banners out of whatever materials they have. They're hung in flood affected businesses and homes. And it's a really lovely gesture of putting all the pain and anguish that we're all feeling into a creative project and showing that to anyone walking by so they know that they're not doing it alone and giving them hope that we will get through this. So our float is called Love More. We've got uh, heart inflatables and designs and we're working it all out as we go, but yeah, it's heart focused. We're really trying to bring that sense of community resilience to World Pride through our float. I am looking forward to seeing that float. Uh, hey, Mel, Mel, if you can hear me down in Hyde Park, <laughs> how are the floats going? Is it about to kick off? What's going on? Um, you can hear the dikes on bikes. Everything is electric down here. I'm a bit overwhelmed. I should have had a Barocca, to be honest, but this is my first Mardi Gras. I've not made it down before because it's a very long bus ride from Brisbane. I'm just, there's a few people here have forgotten their pants. So if you're a dressmaker, get down to Hyde Park ASAP and whiz up some pants for these poor blokes who are, they've just got a top on. Uh, but the atmosphere is so positive and so supportive and it just makes you want to do a bit of this. It's great fun. Um, I am, I'm dehydrated already, which is a huge mistake I've made. But this, this is the night of my life. It's like New Year's Eve. Beats the Royal Easter Show rolled into one. This is awesome. I hope everyone has a fantastic Mardi Gras, including all of these bears who are here. I'm yet to see an actual bear, but uh, there's men here at the moment, but apparently the bears are turning up later, so quite exciting. Well, I cannot wait to see what goes on here for, for you, because I mean, surely, surely, and Mel's got enough to get, right? Like, like, hopefully. She'll have to, yes. Oh, she yes. probably could climb a bear, get in that way, yeah? Yeah, that, no? that, that'll do it. Hey, uh, th this is so wild. It's been years since we've had those two be back on the street. Like, it's, it's been far too long. So much. <laughs> it's loud. It's yeah. loud. <laughs> I love it. The music it as well. It's, it's just so epic. Sorry, sorry. Well, for those who haven't been on the street before, because I know we've had a few people, even on our own team, who are like, I've been to Mardi Gras, but only at the SCG in the last couple of years. So, this goes on first. Like, clear the room, up and down, make sure it's good to go. <laughs> And it will be. Yes! <laughs> and then very, very shortly, the first of the floats will start stepping off from down where Mel is. So hopefully she's getting us all the gossip on what's going on there. But in the meantime, while we wait for all of these bikes to get off of the street, look, <laughs> this hold up, we're going to assess what's going on and figure it out. But in the meantime, 
let's go cute. Let's go sickeningly cute. I'd like to introduce you to some very special queer foster parents. And don't worry, we'll keep you posted on what's going on here, right here on the ground. Spen and Magic are two of our Gen 2 penguins and they came to us here at Sea Life Sydney Aquarium in 2016. Spen came from Queensland and Magic came from Melbourne. They're star-crossed lovers and they've been together for six years now. We started noticing signs of affection between the two, some courtship displays such as bowing and gifting each other pebbles. They started making a nest together, a nice very tidy home, probably the neatest nest in the exhibit. We thought they'd make great dads, so in 2018 we fostered them an egg and that hatched into baby Spenjik. Spenjik is now four years old and is a fully-fledged member of our sub-Antarctic penguin colony. One day soon, perhaps, she may be a mother of her own, which would make Sven and Magic grandfathers. We're so proud to watch the love between this couple and we're going to make sure they have a very special Sydney World Pride. Oh, aren't they just the cutest? And Jack, here, here they are. This is, this is oh, your home. This is the, the boys on bikes. bikes. Hello, boys. Can you see me? <laughs> I think oh. the boys are a new addition, right? You didn't yeah. always have the boys on bikes at the start. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's often as well with the dikes on bikes. They've been quite inclusive and there are trans people on the bikes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Across. It's not just exclusively dikes. It's kind of people across the gender spectrum are, are welcome to uh, be amongst their ranks these days. The dikes on bikes were actually known as like the guardians of our community, you yeah. know, back in the, yeah. the 70s and 80s when unfortunately there were gay bashings, gay people were targeted in the streets. The dikes on bikes would go around on their motorbikes and protect the community from, you know, potential violence. So yeah. we do owe a lot to them. They're, they're our heroes. It's been a bit of focus actually on, on gay history for a long time. If you want something fixed, you get a lesbian or you get a drag queen. <laughs> right, that's that's it. Yeah, <laughs> they, rule of thumb. Yeah, they yeah. really have been our saviors as a community and continue to be. And that's why they lead the whole thing. Jez has been down on the street, of course, like as these bikes rip past. Has the parade left Hyde Park yet, Jez? Do we know? Jez? Is Jez even Are you there? there? Yes. That's okay. Look, net yes. line. We'll see if we can get Jez. <laughs> In the meantime, we're, while we get him up, we've got our amazing uh, plans for the rest of the night. Mm. Jack, you didn't tell me which your favourite was going to be. Which float? Oh, my favourite float. Oh, well, I mean, there's like 208 or something. It's like the most yeah, floats we've absolutely. had in the past 10 years. How am I meant to pick just one? Yeah, you want to look behind the scenes? Uh, yeah. yeah. We've got a tyrant. That's a, that's uh, a fat do. document It is there. a fat document. We are going to get through each and every <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, we certainly are. Look, okay, if I have to pick one, um, I, I'm always quite interested and fascinated to see the upcycler ones because I yeah. just think, you know, they're, they're so fantastic what you can do with rubbish and, and turn it into... I mean, it's amazing what you've done. Turn it into art. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rubbish at all. That's gorgeous. Yes. Hey, actually, Jack oh, and Mott, we yeah. all three of us were there last night at all that uh, out of wait, live, live and proud. proud. I'm so tired. <laughs> Kylie, uh, Danny, uh, that moment. Yeah, Mon, do you know what, yeah. though? They, Kylie actually had asked me to come out with her, and I said, Kylie, what about your sister? Oh, yeah. so, it's very yeah, generous of you. Yeah, well, there you go. Just got to have you a moment. You do have nice hair, though. Thank you. Say. <laughs> it was stunning. Hey, it was Jez, stunning. Jez is ready for us. Jez, the parade, I've just heard word, has left Hyde Park. Can you see anything? Yes. A little bit, somewhat, <laughs> down Oxford Street. I can't really see it from here. Do you know what? Because there's like thousands of people in my way. They're pretty excited, I think. 1.7 kilometres, Nate. It's only going to take them 35 minutes, but I tell you what, they're going to be dancing. They're getting their cardio up, their steps up. Look at this crowd. The vibe here, I cannot tell you. The vibe is just absolutely incredible. People are sort of like dressed up, dressed down, not dressed at all. And they're thrilled. And look at that. Right yeah. at the end there, right in front of the War Memorial, you can see the parade has begun. They're making their way up Oxford Street and then wait for it, the big moment right here on Taylor Square. It's going to be magnificent. We're back on the home ground of Mardi Gras, where it all began. Hey, Jez, this is not your first rodeo, not by any means. How does this crowd feel compared to, say, 2020, the last time we were on the street? Look, uh, to be honest, we had some really good parades at the SCG. The, yeah. the vibe was awesome in that arena. You know, the sound and the vibe just kind of reverberated around the stadium. This is a different thing. It's symbolic because of Oxford Street. 
I can barely hear myself think. Um, because of the vibe on Oxford Street, you know, this, it's, it's symbolic here. This was the scene of all that b brutality 45 years ago. And so to see this, this parade, 200 plus floats, making their way up Oxford Street and then down Flinders Street, it's going to be magnificent. And I tell you what, the vibe is awesome. We've all been trying to pace ourselves during the day and kind of like dancing in the sun. We're all running on adrenaline. We've barely slept. <laughs> It's so symbolic that people are here, and I tell you what, this is the ultimate exercise in being seen. People who have experienced shame, rejected, re rejection, a lack of acceptance, here they are tonight being seen by these thousands of people and being acknowledged, being loved, being cheered for in a way that brings healing to the heart. This is what it's all about, being seen here at Mardi Gras and being loved. So true. Years. Yes. Uh, look, you're going to have to get out of the way, my friend. Clear the street. Be I might jump on a float, who knows? <laughs> yeah. well, we'll see, right? There is, we have our eyes on it right now, the very first float of this 45th Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras winding its way up Oxford Street. And I do believe that this is the First Nations float. And yes, that is a 20 metre long rainbow serpent there. Wow, uh, I did it. I did get out my uh, measuring tape and rule it. <laughs> uh, and, and some of you are probably quite familiar with the dreaming story of the rainbow serpent. And tonight, it is a representation of these participants' um, connection to country and dreaming stories of creations. I also believe the, the the idea behind this has been years in the making. They've always wanted to do this, and now that we're back on the street, this vision is finally realised. And isn't it stunning? It, it's yeah. so beautiful. It's, it's all parachute material, and it really does look like a, a serpent moving. Down Oxford Street, really it does. especially in that, in that aerial shot. It's, it's like just... it's eating people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, wild. it's so good that uh, yeah, First Nations float leads the parade. You know, uh, of course, for our community, our rainbow queer community. Oh, by the way, we're going to say queer quite a bit here and there. And look, for some people, that's a bit of a difficult term because it was used as a slur and it's been it's been recaptured. But uh, you know. LGBTQIA plus is what we mean when we're saying queer. Uh, anyway, sorry, lesson's over for a second. <laughs> That's that dull. I'm sure there'll be plenty more lessons throughout the night knowing us three. Oh, for <laughs> sure. But you know, for Indigenous people, for Indigenous queer people especially, the experience is just so much worse for them than, than anyone else in our community, just about. And so it's great that here they get to lead with pride and love. You know, I did speak to um, some Indigenous queer folks in a podcast that I record, and yeah. I spoke to um, a Bardi man from um, northern Western Australia who said that growing up, he was allowed to express his natural queerness, was not judged for it, had a very beautiful experience just for being who he was, and it wasn't until he moved to Perth in the big city where he faced stigma for being who he was. So in his remote community, it was perfectly fine. In the big city, he copped it. It was quite, it was interesting. It is, it is. It's in community. The, the relationship with, uh, like in, for Indigenous people around the world, there's often a two-spirit or a... That's a, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's often the colonisers that came and brought the homophobia, the transphobia with yeah. them, what unfortunately. What are talking about? I wouldn't know anything about that at all, <laughs> being queer and Indigenous. What is um, fantastic about tonight, like this is queer visibility and queer pride on a scale that I don't think we've ever seen before in Australia. Um, but it's also on a global scale. This is part of Sydney World Pride 2023. Um, we've never had that in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a huge event. So it's a platform for all of us to celebrate, be proud of who we are, but to also think about what else needs to change to improve the lives of LGBTQIA plus people across the globe. Because, you know, we still face challenges. We still need to make progress. And let's talk about, actually, the reason that we are on the street right now. And that is the next float sitting right behind that gorgeous rainbow snake weaving its way up Oxford Street. That is, of course, the 78 as You can see there, and those placards held high, the, the upside down pink triangle, which is, of course, a, quite an old symbol and one that was filled with hate, meaning gay people in particular, gay men specifically, but it's been reclaimed. And the 78 ers they marked the first march up, down Oxford Street, actually, the opposite way to which we go today. 
and that was considered right. the that first. That pink triangle, that was actually also reclaimed as the very first gay pride mm. symbol before the rainbow flag, but the rainbow flag was introduced in 1978 to bring a more hopeful, positive um, message to our communities. Yeah, because this is from a time where it was very much battle, right? There were, there were battle lines drawn, and it was, they were fighting for That's right. survival and for respect. And, and you're very right. Our gay rights movement in Australia really emerged in the 70s. In uh, 1971, an organisation called Camp Inc., the Campaign Against Moral Persecution, which was Australia's first gay and lesbian political organisation, came about. And it was those um, pioneers who really, you know, paved the way for our first Mardi Gras to even take place. So the history started before 1978. And, um, and the theme tonight of our 78ers is 1973, 50 years of LGBTQIA plus rights. And, and they're acknowledging some of the milestones that occurred in 1973. Discrimination was banned in the Federal Public Service. Um, there was law reform in South Australia. In April 1973, the phone a friend, a gay counselling phone service started actually in the lounge room of Peter DeWaal, who's one of our 78ers. He's not marching with the 78ers tonight. He, we'll hear from him a little bit later with uh, Q Life in 2010. But that original phone counselling service in Peter's lounge room still exists today, and it's called Q Life. And it's a national LGBTQIA plus counselling service. It's a phone service and a web service. Started back in 1973, still exists. In the hallway of Peter DeVal. Yeah, in, in, in his lounge room. In his lounge room. And it was, so it was Peter and his partner, Peter bon, Bonsalboon. Um, they're also ABC icons. They uh, shared the yeah. first ever ah. same-sex male kiss on ABC TV. Um, I've in, got, oh, oh, do you know when it was? 1970. Wow, your, your brain, Mon. I think 72, 74, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> now, although I, I have a bone to pick now with the 78ers, that makes the second couple I've met where it was two people with the same name. Peter and Peter, there's a Dave and David as well that, right. uh, that I spoke to just on Fair Day last weekend. Uh, so great to see the 78ers out and being so well respected. Yeah. And, and some of them, uh, you know, 80 years young. So yeah. it's so great to see them still marching and, and participating this year. And it is so important to highlight what they've done for our community. And, and yeah, it's so it's so important. It's fantastic to see. Look at that aerial shot. It's just spectacular. Wow. Look at the size of this. Is that a helicopter that has taken that? I, I, I think it might be. I or a big drone. That, that we have <laughs> splashed out. And we absolutely, because we want to show everybody exactly what's going on from the best advantage. I mean, I was actually more asking you because I would like a lift home later, but, <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so here we've got the rainbow surfer uh, making its way up Oxford Street. It can't be too far away from Taylor Square now. No, and that's where we are actually situated, at Taylor Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, so right, facing right onto it. Yeah. Well, we're, actually, we're behind it. Sort of. So, like, <laughs> I'm usually behind the news, but tonight I'm uh, behind the parade. Aha! Nice. Uh -huh. nice. Which, actually, the parade's but, behind us. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no behind the parade. the parade sounds better, because yeah, okay. that could be a good spin-off, maybe, uh -huh. if anyone's listening higher up, yeah? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh, look at the crowd just really getting involved. Like, that. everyone wants a picture, the flags are waving, you really start to feel that energy. I'm, I'm just looking out behind us here, and all of the heads are turned down Oxford Street, just waiting to see this, this very first float. After three years of not being here, back on Oxford Street. Now, Mon, I feel like you'd be a bit of an expert on Mardi Gras. When was, when was your first Mardi Gras? My first Mardi Gras, you know, I can't remember the actual date, but it would have been late noughties. And um, I entered a float uh, with my friends, and we were dykes on push bikes. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. I get it, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we were riding down Oxford Street on our BMXs, paying homage to the uh, legendary dykes on bikes. You do come across as a bit of a BMX fan. <laughs> <laughs> That is very, very Mon, but also Mon, I mean, you've done it right. Uh, you, I don't think anybody should really remember their first Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's just so heady. There is so much going on. Uh, it's so exciting. I'm not, I'm not suggesting everybody go out and do anything irresponsible, not by any means, but definitely, definitely, the first time you're here, it is so overwhelming, I think. <laughs> when, you? when was yours? Uh, again, I'm not entirely sure, Mon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, was, it would have been, I reckon, 
Oh yeah, in the early 2000s as well. Who knows? You know, I might have been there together and had an awesome night. Right, and right. neither of us can remember. Okay. You yeah. know, for two people who know a lot, you seem to have forgotten about your <laughs> yeah. class. So. That comes with age, Jack. Don't worry, it'll oh. get to you too. And have you marched yet? I am yet to march. Uh, I have, I, last year was actually, I'm going to say my first official year. Yep. I, I know the reason why I didn't go properly the first time I went. Um, but it took me a few years, you know, I, I'm also living in Adelaide at the moment, so it's a bit harder, but um, I'm really excited. I, I need to march, I feel mm. like that. If, if I wasn't in the confines of this box, I probably would be out there marching with the First Nations right now. Oh, brilliant. But yeah, so it would be pretty exciting. I was at the SCG last year and that was incredible. Um, but I'm just, I, like, you can't have a 20 meter rainbow serpent in it. Well, you probably could in the SCG. <laughs> but, just look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, mate, it's because you're one of these people that, uh, like, you've been involved at the SCG, of course, but never been on the street. Never been on the right? street. Well, so, I've been on the street, but just not a muddy Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't count. <laughs> I've been uh, proud of, of it at the time. Look, the, the 78ers are up again now. At the very front holding the sign was 78er Robin Kennedy, oh, who on the uh, opening night of um, Sydney World Pride and Mardi Gras last week was the flag raising ceremony at the Sydney Town Hall. Sydney's Lord Mayor Clovermore awarded uh, Robin Kennedy the keys to the city yeah. um, as, you know, just to, to say thank you for all that you have done for LGBTQIA plus rights since the 70s. And it was awarded to Robin on behalf of all the campaigners, all of the activists who've um, you know, earned us the freedoms that we have today. And Robin, I spoke to her on News Breakfast on Friday. Uh, then she got up on the stage at a live and proud last night uh, and oh, yeah. banged out. And just when this, when, when this is done, I had to send me to go and have a look on I It's so, it was so incredible. I didn't know, I think I would be crying that early on into the concert. Right. It was so moving. And look at the banners here. Here are some of the things that the um, the, the marchers chanted in that first Mardi Gras back in 1978, out of the bars and onto the streets, stop police attacks on gays, women and blacks, because when the police did approach the marchers and did turn violent, it sort of turned into a demonstration at that point. Never yeah. set out to be a demonstration, but it became one as a result of what was going on. Meanwhile, look at what's happening behind us right now, team. Here oh, is yes. the, 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 the rainbow serpent. <laughs> it's caught up. Moving right behind. Hey. There's Ben Gratz! <laughs> ben Gratz from the ben creative Gratz. directors of Mardi Gras! Woo! <laughs> and they're coming in right hot on their heels, of course, the 78 ers So what happens here is as each float goes through Taylor Square, they get their moment of glory in front of the seated crowd. And we're showing you off all of all of that action as if you had the best seats. I love this, the 1978 bus. Of course, some of our 78ers are getting on, so it is nice to have a bus to, to sit in and, and go up Oxford Street with all these adoring fans and community members who are wanting to thank them for everything they've done. Yeah. Do you think anyone's on that bus that wasn't meant to be and they forgot to get off at their <laughs> stop and now they're like, oh, oh, well, I'll just stay on and enjoy the ride? <laughs> well, look, why wouldn't you on a rainbow bus like that? Also, the 78ers, so it's not just the people that marched down Oxford Street on that first night but also the people that got involved afterwards. So the police arrested so many people and it was other protesters that really went to well, Darlinghurst Police Station uh, here in Sydney to help get them free and That's eventually so get people those records. Um, collecting donations for bail money to get those 53 people who were arrested out of jail. And of course the parade route and Darlinghurst Police Station now, uh, it's, it's been protected uh, by the state of New South Wales. Oh, talk and did you know it was just announced last night at Sydney World Pride that the old Darlinghurst Police Station is going to be the site of Qtopia, Sydney's first ever queer museum. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, and look here, it's back in the habits. Hey. <laughs> back on the streets, the order of perpetual indulgence. Oh. Wow, look at their rainbow habits. Of course, in the traditional way of nuns, uh, they need oh. some very attractive uh, <laughs> train holders to make sure that those habits don't get dirty. I think I do too. <laughs> hey, what, hey, what's under those habits? None of your business. <laughs> oh, no. You like that? Oh, Jack. Nice, Jack. Oh, okay. <laughs> Starting early. Right, I understand. Gotcha. So the sisters, I mean, if, if you've been to any, any Mardi Gras events, you would have seen the sisters before. They are so wonderful at connecting community 
and bringing in those with the with some religious concerns. And up next, we have the Point Clare families. They're pumping up the pride tonight with their float. Uh, the Point Clare families provide supportive community where all families can come together and celebrate diversity in the areas of Point Clare, Tasket, and Coolawong on the central coast of New South Wales. And I'm sensing a bit of a music theme. Ooh. I don't know why. It could be the giant headphones and maybe the record on there. Oh, you recognise that? It's retro. I, do, the records are back in, mate. Oh, right. Right, yeah, good. <laughs> good. I'm just worried that you're a little bit too young. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, oh, I absolutely happen to turn around and wave the 7 8 going behind us, but uh, while I'm at it, hey, sister, soul sister, this that you're looking at right now, it's a Shell Harbour Shack Artist. Or if you're actually from Shell Harbour, New South Wales, Shalaba. Shalaba. <laughs> <laughs> so this float is from the Wollongong area, so south of Sydney. Marching tonight, they're hoping to inspire all of Oxford Street to embrace those curves, those hairy bodies, those non-binary bodies, by wearing lingerie that represents their own identity. I wonder how many of them were fighting over who could be Christina and get <laughs> Christina's first. I, I could almost be marching with them. Look, I've kind of got the right oh, colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little more risque than my usual Missy vibe. Missy Elliot, who, in, who intros it at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I know too much about this song. You do, I? you do. <laughs> but Mon, you're dead on. If we added some feathers and showed a bit more skin, you got hundred percent get you there. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Yeah, done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're not mucking around tonight. Up next, no frills, no you, just pure trans visibility. It's trans glamour. And their signs read trans joy, trans love, beautiful trans affirmations. That is hundred percent gender euphoria that you are witnessing right now. Um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Victoria, who sort of founded Trans Glamour, which is a, a monthly night in Sydney on Oxford Street for trans performers to celebrate the trans community. Uh, she's an absolute pioneer of trans visibility in Australia, and it's wonderful to see her and the performers marching tonight. Hey, queer family, if you don't recognise it, that baby blue, baby pink and white flag that uh, all of these people are holding is the trans flag. And it's now included, it's kind of a progress flag in the rainbow flag. So you can see that little arrow that comes into the side, little triangle section on some new flags. That's what it is, just to make sure that we're as inclusive as possible. And we also have the brown and black stripes in the progress flag as well to acknowledge queer people of colour. So it's in the spirit of being more inclusive and to draw attention to some of the issues still facing our marginalised communities. Right. Oh, and here we are marching to be seen in five plus visibility. And speaking of colours, we'll just continue on with it. It's blue, purple and pink and that's actually the colours of the bisexual flag. So there you go. Beautiful. A bi plus people, of course, again, another really overlooked group of people in our queer community. I think you were telling me the other day that they're almost the, the, the biggest portion of our LGBTQIA plus acronym, the bisexual community, yeah. but they but also face so much stigma. They do. And, and by erasure. Exactly, because you know, if you're with somebody who is from the opposite sex, then, well, you often just considered a straight person. So I think the data's not as good as it could be, but yeah, it's a really good chance that the majority of people on the rainbow somewhere fit in the bi plus pocket. Right, and their message is very clear tonight. Be seen, look at the bejazzling on that oh. top. Wow. And, and some folks ask, what does the plus mean? And it's again, it's in the spirit of inclusion. Um, it can refer to the pansexual community, which is a little bit different to being bisexual. Because bisexual is when you're attracted to your own gender and other genders. Pansexual is when you are attracted to people regardless of their gender. So a slight difference, and bi plus is very inclusive, a uh, way to describe it, them both. I'm going to keep the lesson going, though. And on the theme of colour, I mean, look at that colour around Taylor Square. Like that's, that's the moment, that's the bit, the big part of the parade as they come through. The crowd is absolutely roaring. <laughs> we'll see people doing their, their floats, doing their big dance right as they hit Taylor Square as well. Oh, it is excellent, but the lesson continues. You can see the Bi Plus flag there. Uh, what are the other colours of the rainbow, Jack? Oh, uh, red and yellow and pink and green. And black oh. as well. <laughs> We're adding in black, absolutely. This is Black Rainbow, a grassroots and diverse uh, group that are striving to elevate the health and well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander LGBTQIA plus sister girls and brother boys. 
Ah, sorry, sister girls and brother boys. What, what is that? Oh, so it refers to the trans and gender diverse uh, community within First Nations communities. Excellent. Right, so uh, instead of two spirit here in Australia, sister girls and brother boys, and we've got some more people to be to make sure are included in our community here. That's right. This is a special place this year. It's the first time the parade has dedicated um, has a dedicated First Nations disability group. Here come the first People's Disability Network Australia. Wow, so these marches have transformed their mobility schools into totemic native animals such as the goanna and rainbow serpents. I'm, I'm loving how right up the top here we are we are seeing all of the people that are included but often miss out and are overlooked for some reason. And of course our disabled uh, brothers and sisters in the rainbow spectrum are overlooked, they're forgotten often, but they're here, they're queer, and they're not going anywhere, and they deserve to be up near the front as well. There you go, out loud, as loud as you can be. I've um, interviewed in a few folks uh, who are queer, who have disabilities, and they often say that their queerness is sort of pushed to one side because yeah. their, their disability can often be the first thing that people recognise, and they're like, you know, stuff that. It's like, we are proudly queer, and we're here tonight to really show that and to celebrate that. So important that we keep looking after everybody, everybody who is part of our family. There you go, our bodies, our lives, our rights, and we're perfect as we are. Here, here. <laughs> and uh, nice. there you go. There you go. Nice. Say it how it is. I get horny too. Do you know, that's what I can get behind. Here we go. I get horny too. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I believe this is people with disability Australia. Our PWDA and they're marching this year with Let's Get Loud and apparently Let's Get Horny. Oh, yeah, uh, get look here. who's up next. It's uh, the City of Sydney. Yeah, I scream, you scream, we all scream for the City, City of, of Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are so cute. Oh, they look delicious. Oh, pastel ice cream. Pass it this way, please. Oh, thank you very much. The theme this year is Oxford Street. You're so sweet. Isn't that oh, nice? It's perfect because I've got, okay. Oxford Street is the heart of the gay, lesbian, bi, transgender life here in Sydney. And uh, so why not celebrate it? The road itself, like, you know, it is now a state treasure uh, and it's, it's going to be around forever. And really bringing Mardi Gras back to Oxford Street, having it included as part of Sydney World Pride is really electrifying this gay, lesbian, trans hotspot in Sydney, as it you just said, and really it's fantastic is. seeing it come back to life. Coming down here the other day, I've never seen it so vibrant and so alive. So it's been cool. incredible. Remember, I'm talking about people in Sydney that you cannot miss. Alex Greenridge and Lord Mayor Clover Moore, Sydney's double act. So, oh. <laughs> One is gay, one is a gay icon. Can you pick which is which? <laughs> no, no, I'm joking, we love you, Clover. <laughs> uh, such a fixture of Sydney for so long. They've been marching together since 2013. Oh, and uh, we, we have so much to go. And coming around the bend right now is Interpride. Standing by with one of the float participants is Jez. Hey, Jez, who have you found? Hey, mate, we haven't got Interpride just yet, but i tell you who is here. Uh, the Lord Mayor of Sydney, <laughs> Clover Moore. She's been marching for a long, long time. Here you are, Lord Mayor. Welcome to Mardi Gras 45. Yes, isn't it wonderful? You're getting a good reception? We're getting a wonderful reception. There are lots of people here and it's wonderful weather and it's a very happy event. It's fantastic. Uh, how does it feel to be back on Oxford Street tonight? It's great. It's, it's, everyone's really pleased to be back here on Oxford Street. <laughs> Have a fabulous, fabulous night, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Jeremy. Happy Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. <laughs> Is that an out of drag Courtney? The Lord Mayor of Sydney, Clover Moore, getting a massive reception from the crowd here. Back on Oxford Street. What a vibe, Nate. I think uh, we've got Interpride coming up this way. Hey, come with me. Come with me. And let's see if we can grab Interpride. This is the governing body of World Pride. And it was their decision to award Sydney World Pride for this year, the very first time in the Southern Hemisphere. Sorry, guys. Very first time in the Southern Hemisphere, and goodness me, are we not putting on a show. Hello. Welcome to Mardi Gras 45. Oh, thank you very much. Christine Garina from the European Organisers, uh, Pride Organisers Association. Yes. How does it feel to have Pride in the Southern Hemisphere, World Pride in the Southern Hemisphere for the first time? 
It's really, really amazing, especially seeing how it's embraced uh, LGBTQI community from all over the world in all of its diversity. We love it. Why don't we march along? Let's walk along with your group, otherwise we're going to get held up here. But you organise um, pride festivals, particularly in hostile environments. Yes. What does that involve? Because you don't always get a friendly crowd at movements and marches like this, do you? It's the most important thing for Pride is visibility, right? And that's what people need who live in a homophobic and hostile environment because we need to be seen. That is a key that Pride can give. And that's what we're doing here. We're marching for those who can't march because they can see us in those cities, in places like Poland, Hungary, Serbia, uh, Turkey, whatever are these cities. So we are seen. Ukraine is one of those countries too. You've been doing some work with uh, pride communities, rainbow communities in Ukraine. What does that involve? Absolutely. There are pride organizations in Ukraine and LGBT organizations who have transformed their work into humanitarian help for people who are suffering from the war and for people who need to relocate or refugees. The work they do is absolutely amazing. Well, it's terrific to have you here as part of the European Pride Organizers Association, marching with Interpride. Christine Garina, thank you. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Now, and to keep the international theme going, we've got Shanghai Pride coming as well. They're here to marching to increase the visibility of Chinese and Asian um, community around in Australia, but also around the world. And their message tonight is, we are here too, and yes, you are, you are here. <laughs> you certainly are. I just love the international representation because it is Sydney World Pride 2023. We've got more international floats this year, which is brilliant to see. Talking about brilliant to see, hey, Mon, you know this lot very well. <laughs> so a gift from Acorn with Love. It's the AIDS Council of New South Wales. It started as an AIDS Council, but these days Acorn represents so much more than that. It's New South Wales' leading health promotion organisation specialising in community health, inclusion and HIV responses for people of diverse sexualities and genders. And they're a massive part of our queer community here in New South Wales. So it's Acorn, not the 2000s rapper. No. <laughs> okay, okay, just clarifying, just clarifying. Oh, you are asking for it absolutely this, this evening, Jack. Hey, this year they'll be handing out over 170,000 condoms with lubricant as oh. well. Because they want to make sure that everybody's safe. You know, you can do whatever you want, love who you want to love, make sure you do it safely. You have so many happy faces there, it's incredible. We've just got the best of both worlds where we're seated. We get yeah. to see these beautiful area, aerial shots on screen, and right behind us, we can practically touch the marches. It's just fantastic. So Such close. an electric atmosphere. With consent, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we just had some, uh, I believe, biodegradable confetti uh, cannons going off, and I'm glad I didn't get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and look, as aging, mature, age, gay, something I know absolutely nothing about, uh, <laughs> they are proud to be gay, grey, and out. It's MAG Sydney or MAG Sydney mm -hmm. um, and their placards, the, the, their message tonight is mature age gays, we gather as we dream and amplify that being an older gay is okay. See Nate, nothing to worry about. <laughs> there's a lot more women marching with MAG this year as well, which is one thing to say. Right you Jack, I've got my eye on you. Look, we're all going to end up a little bit older by the rule, hopefully. We all get to end up. Oh, there goes more confetti <laughs> behind us. Oh, um, it, you can see it just there in the, on the screen, just just, just while we get in front of the camera, much more gently it's down like than snow. Winter. <laughs> oh, like, I guess that's snowflakes. No? It is. It's essentially gay snow. <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, I, Mag, so they're a group they meet twice monthly on a Saturday, once a week on Wednesday. They're such they're, social butterflies. They're more social than I am, that's good. Yes. I think you might need to get out for and uh, well, why not get out for a party? Ah, oh, it's carnival! Uh, oh. They're right for the picking, it's fruits from Brazil. Uh, oh, I love fruit. You know, as, as a reclaimed word, I think we need to lean more heavily into fruits. I love it. It's, it was just me and a bunch of fruits. <laughs> and quite happily, <laughs> they are beautiful today. Yeah, you can have a hoop with a bunch of fruits. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> So Carnivale is what Brazil is known and loved for, and they're bringing that Carnivale energy all the way to Oxford Street. This is not the only time you'll see these massive wings 
captain for sure. Absolutely, there will be a guaranteed fixture of many of the floats. I'm, I'm glad that our, our, our fruits from Brazil got, got in first. Did you know they're called Isis wings? What? Really? The, the capes, I believe they're called Isis wings. Oh. Is that, Jack, are you trying to give us a history lesson? <laughs> no, I wouldn't <laughs> try and outdo you two, trust me. It's so colourful. Have either of you guys been to Brazil? I have not, sadly, although I'm, I'm ready. Are you Are you offering? I'm in my dreams. It's I have been to Brazil. It's on the bucket list, yes. that's for sure. Has anyone travelled out of the country for World Pride to go to another World Pride around the world? I, I've, I've sort of, I think I have. I think it was in Sweden a few years ago when I was there, and I did go to like a, a human rights -y sort of event as part of that. But I, my biggest claim is um, I played in the gay games in Paris oh. a few years ago in soccer. Soccer. Yeah. Okay, that's one with the ball that's black and white. That's right. Yeah, okay. That's right. Got yeah. it. If we had a ball here, I'd give you a bit of a lesson. Right. Oh, meanwhile, guide dogs, New South Wales. We have here for you, Gulliver. Stand by. Oh. You're about to see. This isn't Gulliver. No, no. <laughs> Gulliver is uh, somewhat. There is Gulliver. Oh. A giant <laughs> replica of a golden Labrador. I love puppies and I'm willing to take Gulliver home anytime. <laughs> Absolutely. What more can you expect from tonight than, well, why not? A giant dog rolling down the street. Hey, to tell us more about it, Mel caught up with the pack earlier in the marshalling area. I'm joined with Ingrid, who's on the guide dog's float. Ingrid is legally blind. Ingrid, is your guide dog with us here tonight? No, my beautiful guide dog, Banner, will be relaxing right now at home. Uh, this is a very intense environment. There's lots of lights, there's lots going on. And also, it goes down Oxford Street, right? And Banner's used to walking me down on the pavement, and he'll be... overwhelming uh, for both Banner and myself. What about you, Ingrid? Are you able to enjoy an environment like this as someone who's uh, legally blind? Yeah, so with my eye condition, um, retinitis pigmentosa, it's like severe tunnel vision. So I have a tiny little pinprick of central vision that I can enjoy all the colours and the lights and also the sounds are amazing, come on. And it's such a melting pot of individuals, I've got so many friends across all the floats, so I'm having a great time. And you've got your friend Dolly Diamond with you to help you tonight. Dolly, thank you for joining us. Loving every minute of it. Loving it. <laughs> Happy Mardi Gras, everyone. Oh, <laughs> Dolly oh. Diamond, the one, the only. What an absolute legend now back in Australia. Star of News Brecky too, I oh, believe. Sure, you will see Dolly on News Brecky as often as she gets to just get, secrete herself into the building under <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Look, now we have minus 18 coming down Oxford Street. It's hard to believe, but this is their first time marching in Mardi Gras. They're such a well-known organisation, you know, celebrating queer youth across Australia. It's fantastic to see so many young people there, uh, you know, celebrating, marching with them. Um, and if you don't know, they're a not-for-profit national organisation, changing the lives, uh, focused on changing the lives of queer youth. It's so important for, uh, for our queer young people to see where they are and, and what they can do to, to find support and, and, and to just get amongst it. And that, they hold a bunch of events, don't they? They do, they do. Yeah, they're actually quite well known for their queer formals. Yeah. If you think back in the day when you were at high school, if you had, would have had the you know courage to be able to bring your partner, if you, I don't know if you were out then or knew you were gay back then. Oh, but I, I definitely knew, definitely was not out. Okay. But just to think these days that queer kids can just be exactly who they are, be with the people they love and celebrate just like all the other high school kids. Yes, that's exactly right. And look, I went to a performing arts school, so every formal was a queer formal, <laughs> fortunately for me. But it is so important to have these events. And I believe they're celebrating 25 years since the first Minus 18 event, which is incredible. So much to celebrate tonight, isn't there? Yeah. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen them in the parade before. But uh, here's some people we have seen before. Uh, with a Doctor Who themed close. <laughs> cool. It's Captain Jen. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, Dalek. Oh, careful, careful. Uh, oh, my goodness. This is wonderful. Pride is universal. Absolutely. Are uh, any of you two a Doctor Who fan? A Whovian? Can't, can't say I am. Okay. I can't, but watching <laughs> this, I am so into the commitment of these, what are they, gargoyles? Or gay goyles oh, with their wings. Yeah. Well, 
Do you know Is that nothing? a Doctor Who thing? I, I don't watch it. <laughs> we're, we're clearly clueless. <laughs> I know that's a, a TARDIS. No, that's a Dalek. It stops. Oh. If you don't know, don't guess, Jack. Okay. You'll, you'll have Whovians tracking you down. <laughs> Same as never ever call him Doctor Who, the titular character. Or her, uh, when it's her. Uh, uh, it's uh. the Doctor. Right. right. Doctor Who is the Doctor name of the show. That's the, there is no Doctor Who. Oh, right. There Look, is I've the got some questions. Who can I <laughs> ask about? Probably this lot, actually. Hey, so, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're actually celebrating 50 years of Doctor Who on TV here in Australia, on the ABC, which uh, you cannot complain about at all. I definitely got square eyes getting up as a very young child to watch Doctor Who at 4am or something. I loved it. I feel like I could pick you as a baby. Uh, really? Yeah. Really. I'm not too deep in. Okay. But um, <laughs> de- I've definitely been licked by that brush. All right. That's for sure. <laughs> My hooda is off. Yeah, right, right. No <laughs> hooda here at all. <laughs> so, Daleks are these things, Jack. You know, like Daleks. Exterminate. I, I, but tonight they're probably darling it. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah. Footy! Footy! I, I would like, <laughs> if I may, to take you on a strange journey. It's the Newtown Breakaway Football Club starring in Rocky Horror Footy Show. <laughs> you actually look like you're starring in a Rocky Horror Oh, thanks. Footy I, might, show. I might jump out and join them. Like <laughs> yeah. uh, they're just having so much fun. So the Newtown Breakaways are a football club that was established in 2002 as an independent women's AFL club. In 2020, they introduced the Breakaways men's team and adopted the mantra, AFL for all. Just shivering with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the tenth year that they've marched. Ten years. Yeah. Huh? It's full of fun facts, aren't they? <laughs> That's a great view. Just as they're getting, oh, just as they're getting into Taylor Square behind us, I'm hearing that music now through my ears. I just want to. Oh, can I do the time warp again, please? Come on. <laughs> you certainly can, but right now we're riding with Universal Pride. It's the Sydney Spokes Cycling Club. And Sydney Spokes is the home of LGBTQIA plus cycling in Sydney. Wow, look I, at the Lycra. That's so cool. <laughs> so, so unexpected. They're riding their bikes, but they're also cosplaying as planets, satellites, moons, asteroids, rockets, and manage to orbit each other and the sun. That is pretty skillful. Gosh, I really hope that's not how the actual planets are orbiting because this feels a bit chaotic. <laughs> let, let me put you to rest. Uh, that, that is absolutely, absolutely not how it works, nor is it to scale, but I don't give a stuff. <laughs> they look great. And anytime you want to bring a bit of space nerdery to a bit of camp queerness, I am 100% here for it. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to also represent the amount of space junk up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be the crowd around. I uh, suspect. Tell you what, yes. they, they look a bit fancier than my old dykes on bikes, dykes on push bikes float. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit of a step up. Oh, oh, oh wow. Jack, I suspect oh. this might be for you, oh. my man. Oh. Why? Because it's. I thought it'd be for oh. you. It's quite horny. Oh. <laughs> yes, oh. but, it, but it's also treasure from trash, I suspect. Oh, <laughs> yes, this is the fabulous queer upcyclers. Viva la revolution! Oh. And these, they're a group they're of friends, and they enjoy being creative and in the community, and um, tonight their costumes are inspired by the eve of the French Revolution. Oh. So think Marie Antoinette or the dramatic silhouettes, textures and excess contrasted with the fervor and passion of the revolutionaries. Gosh, that was a lot of work. I that like was how sad, you said wasn't that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, how, how come, I want to know, how come I've never been to an op shop and found a massive piece of fabric with a naked bum on it? <laughs> You're not looking in the right I've spot, got, mate. I'm clearly going to the wrong ones. Or a great big set of halls. Oh, right Darlinghurst op shop. Oh, right, <laughs> right. right. Sydney special. Got it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. oh, we are moving very oh. quickly on. I, I love gone. these next three groups. Rainbow Families, Rainbow Regional and Gay Dads Australia. These three family-focused floats are marching together. It's, um, it's, these floats really move me when I see them marching down Oxford Street, just in the spirit of inclusion. Also, as a new parent. Yeah, oh. congratulations, <laughs> Indy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, shout out to my, my darling partner Tara and our little six-week-old baby Indy. Hello Tara, hello Indy. 
Indy, who is being babysat by Grandpa Paddy tonight. Shout out, Paddy. I know you're home watching right now. I, I would love to march as a family uh, if I wasn't hosting here tonight. Yeah, I just, I think I just saw Jez's arm coming in and giving somebody a squeeze because, you know, we have so many friends now who, you know, who are more our age, Mom, and yeah. who've now joined their ranks yeah. that are making families, who are able to and feel safe and, and encouraged to do it. Yeah. That's so wonderful. And do you know what, actually, though? My mum really wanted to come in March, but this year the parade was in February, so oh, it didn't quite work out. Woo! Sorry, I'm oh. going to apologise now for all the dad jokes. <laughs> um, although I guess oh, it's Mardi Gras, so it's probably daddy jokes. And, and, point. and especially yeah. the gay dads. <laughs> now, anyway. here we go, the gay dads. Yeah, they, are, they are with you, 100%. <laughs> yes, <laughs> gay dads tell just as bad jokes as any other kind of dad. <laughs> Dad, dad jokes do not discriminate. They do not. They no. are for everything. We're riding inflatable unicorns. I love that. <laughs> or the inflatable unicorns riding them. I can't quite tell. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the excitement. This is incredible. Hey, kids. <laughs> well, it's great for the kids because they're just trying to rush ahead of, well, this threat. <laughs> the, the absolute birds of a feather flock together. Queer roller derby oh. flow. Oh, roller derby. I remember the first time I had a mate of mine was uh, coming back from roller derby, covered in bruises. I was a little bit worried, but I'm informed it is the best fun you can have. You know, um, roller derby was one of the first inclusive sports as well, welcoming yeah. participants from right across the, the gender spectrum, busting through the gender binary, um, and you can just see the, the gender euphoria on display tonight Absolutely. on wheels. Yeah, I've been to a couple of games, and to be honest, my New Year's res resolution. resolution? This year was uh, to go see more roller derby oh, cool. yeah. because it is so entertaining. Yeah. It's epic. You you don't know if anyone's going to survive, but somehow oh they do. <laughs> okay, okay. I think that was just a flip in some skates, and I didn't get to see whether that person survived or not. <laughs> now I'm concerned, but that's okay. Oh, well, look, moving right on, turning it up, and presumably turning it out. It's the Sydney Dance Company. Wow. Oh. And look, I'm going to put it out there. They're, surely they're going to have to have the best moves of the night. You, or, you would think you so, would hey. Know. We're putting them on blast, for <laughs> sure. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Uh, they're, they're stunning. And they're here, choreographed by Ramon Doringo, uh, who has been teaching dance classes at the Sydney Dance Company for over 30 years. Did you know he was one of the first people in Australia to be granted a residency visa on compassionate grounds? in support of his relationship through the Gay Immigration Task Force. Uh, and it was a homosexual partner visa when he moved here to be with his partner back in 1982. And I do believe that is him right there. Oh, and wow. Wow, spectacular. Look at those gloves. Where do I get some of them? <laughs> Maybe actually if I just sing out. But... Hello, excuse me. Where'd you get your gloves? I love that busy. That busy. Definitely got all the moves though. Oh wow. And right behind him. I believe that is Tricone Australia showing their colours of pride. And Tricone Australia, they're a community organisation for LGBTQIA plus South Asians living in Sydney. They're the largest community support group for queer people of South Asian descent living in Australia. And I do believe my hairdresser, the person who cut my hair the other day, dyed my hair, may be marching with them right now. Oh. Hi, Troy. <laughs> Hi, <Random>. Troy. <laughs> do you have any complaints? I mean, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. No, green, it's a vibe, oh. right? It's 100% a vibe, and this lot are also oh. embracing colour. Reds and yellows are two very significant elements of South Asian culture. Uh, it's, it's familiar, the colour of Sindor and saffron, an essential South Asian spice. Yes, a very expensive spice, I believe. And you can hear the drumming. Oh, it just stopped. <laughs> well, you could hear the drumming. You could hear the drumming. There it is. So Tricone, they organise events, host regular meetups, and help build a lovely environment of pride and support. Oh, and up next we've got the Kirkton Road Centre delivering health for all. They're a healthcare service in King's Cross in Sydney, um, and their float has the iconic mobile clinic known as the Kirkton Road Clinic Bus, uh, which used to be known as the AIDS Bus, uh, and was the first of its kind in the world to provide free HIV testing, condoms and clean needles to the most hard-to-reach street-based communities in 
in inner city of Sydney. And Kirkland Road Centre took over the bus's operation in 1990 and since then has been providing essential health to street-based sex workers, uh, people who inject drugs, vulnerable people and people experiencing homelessness. And they're really bringing that message here with the yellow needle disposal bins, which it, I, like, it looks like they're using them as shakers. Maracas? <laughs> like maracas. Maracas. Health Incredible work. Health for. Health for. What a good, just straight up message. It's so clear. And so right, no one can argue with that. I mean, you could argue with that, though. That does not seem entirely safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The shake of the needles are both a bit. I'm sure they've been empty then. Yeah. Maybe some fried <laughs> rice or uncooked rice has been there. Now this next quote, uh, we're, we're going serious for a second, but they're still celebrating. We're raising awareness for something very, very serious here. Marching to highlight a big issue in our community that those uh, people exist who have experienced or are currently living without a home. And that's true, you know, some people in our queer community don't have families who are supportive. Often they have to leave home in order to be safe and can experience homelessness as a result of that. So it's really important that we raise awareness and there are a number of services out there to support people in that situation, like 2010 in New South Wales, which um, supports young queer people experiencing homelessness and who need all sorts of support. Uh, yeah, disproportionate number of our uh, homeless queer people represented in the national statistics. Wow, now this is Mardi Gras, a three metre heart with moving wings rolling down the street. It has to be Wayside Chapel. And their mission is to create a community with no us and them. They do this by breaking down the barriers of judgement and providing a safe place where people from all walks of life are welcome. Wayside is very well known. You see those hearts there, oh, they do such a good job. They've been on and around the streets helping people, caring for them since 1964. Talking about somebody else who's been around for a long time, the Gender Centre, they're celebrating 40 years proudly supporting trans and gender diverse families. The Gender Centre, uh, they deliver welfare, psychological wellbeing services to trans and gender diverse community members and their families right across New South Wales, so much. It's so nice to see you know, members of the trans community and their families sort of marching side by side tonight. See that, that confetti starting to pile up on the street. We'll be <laughs> keeping a close eye on that through the evening. So coming up the street now is gender-free Japanese and tonight they're marching to show Japan how Australia has become an LGBT-friendly country. So they're hoping to inspire their homeland. Uh, and placards tonight read same-sex marriage in Japan. That's right, because in Japan um, it's a nation that does not allow for same-sex marriage. So, you know, using World Pride again as a platform to put that message out there and really, you know, draw up support and, and draw attention to it. Exactly, and they know that they're on the global stage here tonight because Mardi Gras is part of Sydney World Pride, so this is queer visibility on a global scale and they're sending that message back home. And first time in the Southern Hemisphere, so big representation of the Asian region as well. Yeah. Uh, and oh, here we have Team Rainbow, something we're certainly going to be seeing a lot of tonight, we already <laughs> have. But Team Robo is a non-profit um, Queensland organisation that proudly represents all the colours of the queer community in the Sunshine State. Oh, Fabulous. Queensland brothers and sisters may, managed to make it over the border. All the way down. Oh, Woo! Look at that. They're really popping up. <laughs> wait, wait, let, let, let's just watch and see how these Queenslanders move to go. <laughs> That's the biggest banana I've ever seen. Queensland really does have the appropriate name for Mardi Gras, doesn't it? Queensland. You can't uh, get any better than that. Yeah. It's like Yas in New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, Queensland is the entire state. It's true. Oh, I've got to get hey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, there you go. You've got another one. Oh. Now, coming up shortly, in fact, right here. We are Ramily. Now this is the march of the Mermutterfly. What is the Mermutterfly? 
Uh, I don't know, but Zinzi's <laughs> on the street. Can, can you see any of the members there, Zinz? Yes, hello, I am here with Luke. Hey, Luke. Hello, how are you? I'm so good, and we've got Indigo here as well, looking absolutely fabulous. Is this your first time marching? It's our first time as a community group, yes, with our family, which is our friends and family mixed together. It's so amazing. I feel like uh, chosen families are so important for queer people. How is it feeling to be here with your chosen family? It's an absolutely magical feeling to be here with Indigo and her creation of the Mamutterfly, which is a mermaid and a butterfly mixed together. So It is so, so beautiful. Congratulations, Indigo. <laughs> Thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Thank you. I was dancing with Luke last night. Oh, really? <laughs> Clap and proud, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that Zin's cleared that up for me. I now know what a mermaid fly is. And hey, there's another thing flying. It's the kangaroo, the flying kangaroo, of course, on this float. The amazing duo, electric fields. Oh, we saw them performing last night. How amazing do they look? Back around, that's incredible. Hey, why don't all planes look like that? <laughs> Can I have a word with the boss? <laughs> I actually know there was a Pride flight I brought over a bunch of queers from LA just for World Pride. Oh. Yeah. Well, they should. Were the pilots and staff all dressed like that? Oh, I wasn't on the flight, so I don't know. Hang on, we'll tr I'll try and ask them again. It didn't work last time. Is that how you were dressed on the flight? No, they're, they're not. Okay, the sorry. Oh, they've flown the coop and moved on Jack. Ah, and here we are, marching with the theme, empowered trans youth. Hashtag protect trans kids. It's parents for trans youth equality. A group of mostly parents who work together to create a safer and more supportive community for trans and non-binary young people. Fantastic work. This group does such important work. It's very, very powerful when parents stand up and support their trans and gender diverse young people. It means the world to have the support of your parents and your family. There's so much progress that needs to be made for our trans community, particularly trans youth, in, access in accessing gender affirming healthcare, um, access in changing ID documents and things like that. And yeah, it's really wonderful to see this group marching loud and proud. And B is A-OK, -okay, right there. Oh, it's brilliant. And here we are, it's LGBTQIA plus Latinx with their float creatures of a dream world. Oh my god, that oh, is beautiful. No bull there. So these <laughs> costumes, nice, are representations of a la Bruje, which are brightly coloured Mexican folk art sculptures of fantastical creatures. And, and get this, oh. these costumes were designed and made in Colombia. I want one now. That's amazing. <laughs> I think this is the float I want to be part that of. That is, it's pretty nice. sexy. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, incredible. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a really important message behind this float as well. They're marching tonight to bring attention to the fact that 20 Latin American countries do not recognise same-sex relationships, and in seven, homosexuality is still illegal. Again, Sydney World Pride, global stage, there's still a lot more progress that needs to take place. And look, if this song wasn't giving it away, they're here to be loud about that message, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Well, right behind, oh, they've gone, they've gone. That, that was a trio march for the first time, Rick, Caleb and Dylan. Hope you're having a heck of a Mardi Gras, you three. We've got to talk about some fish, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doris Fish I believe, Well, I believe this is inspired by a camp classic Vegas in space, Doris Fish Celebration. Oh. Yeah. What is the film about, you ask? Well, it's a, a gender-bending jewel heist on a planet populated solely by women, which, to be honest, is just a Tuesday for me. <laughs> I think that's that's tomorrow sort of. That's me. tomorrow. I'll oh, to watch. Yes, <laughs> I'd say uh, this next one. Uh, I, I, I think. We'll we need to talk about. Yeah, so this next float is in honour of a nurse who we've sadly lost last year, Donna Marie Bates. Donna nursed HIV AIDS patients in the 80s and worked with mental health patients and volunteered in many Mardi Gras parades and multiple hospital charity organisations. She's definitely someone to celebrate tonight. So wonderful to see so many people turning out. Yeah, and of course, it's not just about the floats and the parties, but it is the everyday humans who hold our community together. There's more of that confetti. Oh, oh wow. 
uh, which I believe I have a good authority. It is biodegradable. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, good, because there's plenty of it to biodegrade. It'll be fertilizing gardens for years. Now, <laughs> now next, uh, this is exciting. And Mon, I know you're going to be all over this. <laughs> Rainbow babies and kids. <laughs> I, uh, I did ask Tara to dress Indy in a, a rainbow-coloured outfit today. Don't yeah. know if she got around to it. Life with a newborn's pretty full-on, but yeah. Uh, yeah, loving it. Now I want to know, I've learned that these things are called ISIS wings. Is Tara going to be sporting some ISIS wings of her own? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> right, OK, fair, fair. <laughs> Do they this... make ISIS wings for babies? I, I'm sure they do. I'm sure we can get Lorraine in the ABC wardrobe to, <laughs> to whip some up. Next, oh, the sea of pink. Check it out. This can uh, only mean one thing, James. Oh, I believe it's queer screen. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> I can read. Uh, and they're <laughs> celebrating the diversity of sexualities and gender identities through queer storytelling on screen. Um, and their float motto this year is queer stories that awaken your senses. Do, uh, do, oh, yeah? I, I was going to say, I actually went to uh, Queer Screen this week and saw oh. a couple of films for the Mardi Gras Film Festival. Um, it was the Trans Women Champions Night. It was two documentaries about uh, two pioneering Australian transgender women. Um, and it was just a, a fantastic night. It was actually a panel on the night. Um, Queer Screen just does some really great events. Talk about screen hey. 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 It's the ABC! <laughs> <laughs> I know these guys. Um, I've heard of them. Oh, uh, so if we stuff. weren't up here tonight, we would be down there marching with ABC Pride, oh. our staff, LGBTQIA+. Oh, oh my God, look at this, it's herself. Queen Ita. Oh, oh my gosh, they, they, they managed to... Is, that, is she on a motorbike? Oh. That, and you know who is up, dry, I riding the motorbike? I certainly do. Amanda Hatter, the woman who, oh. who absolutely made the staff-led gay ABC group work and really brought us together. They make this quote every year. Amanda had a founded ABC Pride in 2017, and it's quite fitting that she is on that motorbike at the front because she is a former president of Dykes on Bikes as well. Oh, yeah, there she is. Oh. Hey, Amanda! And, and Ida, of course, very uh, safe in Amanda's <laughs> and, uh, That's a sweet ride, I reckon. <laughs> I wonder how many times Ida's actually been down the, the Oxford Street in the parade. I'll have to ask her. I'll knock on her off the store on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the ABC cram packed, of course, with camp content as, and presenters, as you can see. And one of the new shows in our blood, Jez is down. One of the stars, Tim Draxel. Jez. As you say, star of In Our Blood, coming out March 19 on ABC TV. This is a show. A work of fiction set during the time of the outbreak of the AIDS crisis in Australia. Yeah. You play a key role in this drama. What's yeah. it about? Uh, it's a, a musical drama series and it's based on uh, Australia's response to the AIDS pandemic in the 80s. So it's, it's inspired by tr true events, real things that happened. Um, it's an incredible story that I think not a lot of people know about. Um, and it was an incredible time where Australia, in terms of the LGBTQI, you know, uh, QIA plus community, really got it right. We set the example for the rest of the world. It's an amazing part of our history that more people should know about. So I'm so thrilled that we get to tell this story. And most importantly, it's a queer story that's being told by queer people. How did you research the role? Because there are people from that time yeah. who lost friends and loved ones, yeah. people who survived yeah. that time as well. You've had a lot to work with. Then. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of personal experience that I got to draw on. When I first came out in the 90s, you know, AIDS was still a you know big part of our kind of cultural fear. Um, so there was a lot to draw on. I spoke to people who worked in Parliament. I watched a lot of documentaries about you know Sydney in the 80s and the underground scene of the you know the gay community, which was just fascinating. Um, and it was such a vibrant you know kind of alive time. Uh, that really came to a crashing halt through the AIDS pandemic and through all of it, you know, our community rose above it with the help from our allies and community groups and the volunteers. We survived and we came out on top. And then look at this tonight. Amazing. 45 years, I mean, you know, sort of so 40 beautiful. years since yeah. when this drama is set. Yeah. And here we are tonight celebrating. I don't know, when you think back to the, you know, the 78ers and how this began, which was really a protest about equality. You know, they wanted it to be a party and the first one didn't turn out that way. And look at us now. It's so inspiring, it's so beautiful. We've come so far. You know, I think the yes vote, I think it was the yes vote that really did it for me. That was the day where I kind of, my, held, my head was held a little bit higher, I think for all of us. 
we could stand a little bit prouder that we were part of society, that we weren't second-class citizens, and we had the same rights as other people. I think it was, it's, it's so, it's a testament to our strength, our resilience, um, and it's so amazing to be here, part of it. It's so beautiful. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Jez. Hey, while, while you were talking with Kim, we had a few floats go past us or autism spectrum, free mum hugs Australia, Australian asexuals as well, all equally important. But here, I just need to, need to step in, because if you need a bit of now for now, these are the team you want. Here comes Lifesavers with Pride, just in time. Oh, they are a common feature. You see them every year here at the Sydney Game List here in Mardi Gras. They're marching to advocate that the ocean doesn't discriminate. Know your safety. And did you know they gave no instructions for the dance moves? They just said freestyle. Oh. Really? That's tonight, amazing. <laughs> tonight they're marching with black armbands in memory of teammates that they've recently lost. Yeah. They're flight safers. Not many people know this. But in times of emergency, when our emergency services are absolutely pummeled, these people turn around and volunteer and help. So you could be saved if you know, there's some disaster going on where there isn't an ocean anywhere nearby, but it still could be a surf lifesaver that rocks up for help. And Thank you, team. Flowing on from the life sails, we have the Teal Wave. They made their mark on our parliament last year, and tonight their wave continues down Oxford Street. It's the independence. Oh, there's Jez. Oh, Jez's oh. obviously got another mate. <laughs> hey, Jez, get out of the way. You're holding up the prey. <laughs> <laughs> but here it comes. It's the steel wave. Of course. Marley Stiggle? Yeah, oh, you'll see plenty of faces you recognise here. Azali, Azali's opponent ran on anti-trans, anti-LGBT rhetoric. This happened so many in our local community. But Zali was strong. She felt strongly about being a voice for inclusion and diversity and was re-elected. Another great group to talk about. Uh, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The Deaf Rainbow New South Wales. Actually, actually, look, that's happy and celebration. Oh, I can do a bit of this. Happy World Pride. Oh, impressive. Yeah, impressive. I, I, I learned how to sign in Auslan. Just Happy World Pride, so I could say to all of uh, Jeff mates and people who, who we find, I just wish them a happy game. <laughs> just before we saw that the float centred around a gas line, and that represents the days before electricity where deaf and hearing impaired people would need to use gas lamps at night to meet up as light was essential for their conversation. Yeah, because you couldn't be hiding away in the dark, you wouldn't be able to read what the other okay. person's signing. That's right. We've got fireworks happening behind us here. Sparks. Yeah. <laughs> Sparks coming was, out of Oxford Street. Sparks now. Yeah, there was heat this wall with flames. <laughs> What's all going on down here? Oh, that's a huge float. There's a lot of people. They really, really are. Oh, yeah. I love this one. <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. So Mardi Gras is all about showing off and celebrating your authentic self. And this float is doing just that. It's called I Just Wanna Be Me. Marsha Switch, who you can see there, is an 83-year-old trans woman who's dedicated her life to giving guidance and assistance to the LGBTQIA plus community. Look at that. Marsha's, Marsha's being overtaken. <laughs> Taking her moment, loving centre stage there in Taylor Square. Actually, there you can see us behind. Hello! Oh. Hello, Marsha! Oh, <laughs> so good, oh. but she's being overtaken by the Queens of the North. And now bringing the vibrancy of far north Queensland all the way to Oxford Street, these two have modelled their costumes off of the iconic landscape of Queensland. But before we reveal their outfits, we thought we caught up with them in the workroom. Knowing that it's World Pride, that this will be on the world stage, we really wanted an opportunity, you know, to showcase Queensland. Marnie actually coined the term Queens of the North, and so it was just like, we're both from North Queensland, we're both very familiar with, like, the colour, the vibrancy, you know, like, the life that is up there. So how would we channel that into something visual, everything seemed to come back to that where the rainforest meets the reef. That's where we've been trying to draw most of our inspiration and Gareth is going to embody the Great Barrier Reef. 
side of it and I will be taking on the Daintree Rainforest side of things with a little bit of crossovers. So the idea is to channel the beauty and the colour that is found in like the queer rainbow through the two natural icons of the region. It's just amazing when you can see people that are being celebrated for their, their point of difference and for their creativity. It's just a really unique opportunity that doesn't happen in many places. I just know there's going to be just non-stop excitement and energy through the whole time that we're there. So much energy and now uh, right behind them, a New South Wales ambulance. Well, they get it. It's just wonderful to see all of the ambos followed very quickly by oh. a place a lot of people know about here in Sydney. So you're about to be on cloud nine, mate, with St Vincent's Health Network Australia. Check out the colours in their float. So this float, it's a real feat of engineering. The cloud is constructed out of a wooden and wire mesh frame. Can you see the, co the oh, cloud yeah, there? I think it's on the floor. Did it came up first? Yeah. OK, cool. Well, I know a lot about this float. So <laughs> it's made of wire mesh frame covered with cotton sheeting and illuminates from the inside with white, blue and pink lights. Jeez, you really do. You know how to construct a cloud, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful to see that rainbow going through. Lose me in skits. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I didn't want to say it, but I was waiting <laughs> like for you, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> no, it's St Vincent's, of course. It always looks after people. It, it's so close to Oxford Street. Just so many of our community members have had a visit to St Vincent's Hospital, and it's amazing the work they do. Definitely, and been a world leader in HIV AIDS research over the years too. And followed very quickly by the Rainbow Recovery Club, which is a safe, dedicated space in Old Coast. So on the other side of Oxford Street for 12-step recovery meetings for members of the LGBTQIA plus community <laughs> and recovering from addiction. And they've been doing that for over 20 years. Oh, so it's such, such a big deal for us. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry you're going to have to step aside because the school is now in session. <laughs> the University of Sydney. So their motto this year is Simplified, Alchemized, Rise Wise. With the alchemy theme, they've borrowed some lab coats from the science department. That's quite a look. Ah, that is a look. I wonder what's under those lab coats. <laughs> it's what time is it? Oh, okay. okay. Got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oz plays out of the closet. Gee, they are looking good. They are totally into their cosplay. The spectacle of all fandom. The cosplays out of the closet. Zinzi's down, up and close with him. Hey, Zinzi, what's the vibe like there on the street? Looks like... <laughs> looks like it's great, Zinzi. I nearly lost an earring. I met a dog called Sauvignon Blanc. It's absolutely <laughs> chaos. It's exactly how it should be. I love being queer. I've got some people that want to give some shout-outs here. Please. Here we have Michael. Hello, hello. It's so good to see all the communities out here today, and I'm so happy that 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 we can all celebrate together. Woo! Oh. That is exactly what Pride is about. We're out of the closet, into the street. Oh, I'm having the best time ever, basically. It thanks. looks like it. It yeah, looks thanks, like they're thanks. having the best time as well. <laughs> Watch out behind you. We've we've just seen Camp uh, Camp Barra, Queen's capital of of course, our own nation. Uh, but now, total metamorphosis. Strutting their stuff, they're larger than life. This is my kind of business, guys. The, our Aussie peacock spider. Spider? Yeah! yeah. Nah, I'm not down with that. You've oh. seen these before. You know, they're these tiny little spiders. They lift their little bums up and shake them all around. They're stunning. And there's Canberra. Oh, nice. All our Canberra. capital. Yeah. We're actually, it is Australia's queerest capital. Is it really? Statistically? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Here you go. Oh, uh, you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals. It's animal <laughs> instincts. <laughs> Marching two by two or like five by five. Oh, OK, they're out of order. I can't count that many. <laughs> but they've chosen to dress as black and white animals for two reasons, I believe. Firstly, to highlight that ruffles, polyamory and same-sex attraction are commonplace in the animal kingdom. Um, and also, the second reason is in the words homophobia only exists in the human one. Animals aren't out there 
your homophobic words. Our animals just who they are. You know, they don't they worry are. about stigma, judgment, social pressure. And we saw that beautiful package earlier on about the penguins. I know. The penguins. Oh my god. Next up, uh, the LGBTQIA plus Christian Church. This is the first time that several churches of uh, these Christian groups in particular have come together at Mardi Gras. It's except in Sydney, Equal Voices and LGBTIQ plus Christian faith groups. And they hope that by doing this float, it's sending a, a message to all LGBTQIA plus people of faith that they are loved and they are valued by God. Yeah, and to create a safe space for people of faith to affirm that they are accepted and valued by God and the church community. So lovely to walk in his pride. I, lo I love these three in the back. Yes. They're just having a ball. <laughs> okay, so who have we got next? It's the Peacock Mormons. They're a group of queer individuals that formed originally in 2018 with 80 Mormon elders marching in the Mardi Gras. And they are golden. Look at that. It's led by a golden couple in spectacular gold Mormon Angel Maroni attire with gold trumpets, gold gods, goddesses, and omni gods. That's 100% pure gold. I'm on to say gold one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. Just put my gold. Yeah, there are yeah. gods in that one. So you. <laughs> oh, up next, here it is. Photoshop for boomers. It's <laughs> Canva. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now, definitely watch, see if you can pick up what it is that they're putting down here. Uh, this is uh, apparently the drag and drop choreography. Can you dance moves? Because that's all you have to do. Bum with Canva, drag <laughs> and drop. <laughs> How do we know that this is all real and it's not just an animation? <laughs> A well-crafted one. Well, that, that certainly is an illusion. Oh, no, I can see them behind me. They are real, I can confirm. They are some amazing sparkly, like, hot pants on those uh, marches. Mon, you're acting like you've never seen sparkly hot pants before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another international float. It's tied together. Oh, I see what they've done there. Yes. Uh, tied together a group of transgender drag queens and gay type people. And, yeah, so they look incredible. More of these ISIS wings. <laughs> That's the takeaway from tonight. I've learned the ISIS wings. I've learned to clock it. Absolutely. The bra up ahead as well. Ah, and Salama Tatang, the Indonesian community. Look at those sarong, sarong, sarong. Oh, had to get it in, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. So dumb. I love it. I love it. They're marching tonight, of course, in traditional Indonesian costumes, Balinese-style sarongs, and ding, which is a traditional headdress. Oh, oh. My enjoy. mum's probably going to be very jealous of these sarongs. She loves the sarong. Loves the sarong. Loves it. Well, she'll probably love one of the one of the gentlemen in those sarongs because former Mr. Gay Indonesia is marching as part of the oh, group tonight. Ooh, I wonder oh. which one he is. Can you spot him? Meanwhile, riding all, riding the rainbow of their dreams all the way <gasps> from the golden guitar to the Golden Mile, Tamworth Pride. G'day, Tamworth. Did you just see Diane at the very front there? Yeah. If anyone's been watching Better Date Than Never on the ABC, um, Diane is a fantastic Tamworth local who is looking for love on that program. If she hasn't found it yet, I hope you find it tonight, Diane. Oh, Mardi Gras is the place, isn't it? It's, well, it's the place to find something, I'm sure. Oh. Meanwhile, oh, Taz Pride. Gotta love some there's some absolute pride from down from the Apple Isle. Has pride. We absolutely got a series called Queer Australia. It's excellent. It's a queer history series. Zoe Coombs Bar spoke to Rodney Groom, an activist about his experience growing up in Tasmania. Well, so we're here at Salamanca Place to talk about what was and remains the biggest act of gay rights civil disobedience in Australian history. Wow. There were 130 arrests here at Salamanca Market uh, at the end of 1988 in defence of a stall that we had calling for the decriminalisation of homosexuality. They said, we don't want that stall there. We don't want any homosexuals in our family market. 
and they brought in the police. And over seven Saturday mornings, there were 130 arrests. As a citizen of the Commonwealth of Australia, I do not believe that I have any need to leave Salamanca. You have refused to leave this area. You are now under arrest for trespass. I can't tell you how difficult it was. We had to take a case to the United Nations. We had to ask the federal government to intervene. We took a case to the High Court. All those things together finally added up to reform in 1997. 1997, like that is so recent. And now we have some of the most progressive LGBTIQA plus laws, not only in Australia, but in the world. I can't wait to watch that. I love Zoe Coombsmart, and I believe we can watch it on Tuesday yeah. on ABC TV. I'm and writing I it down now. You should. I, I managed to get a sneak peek of that first episode. Oh. It's the second one I can't wait for. Uh, it is such, such a good series. I cannot wait. But hey, there is a heck of a lot going on on the ground as well. Things really continuing to kick off. Rodney Coombs, obviously a really important man, as is. Oh, yeah, well, not a good man, but important. Xanadu. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah, I, I, it, it's going to be so much fun. I think, I don't know if it's either here or one, one just before. We've hit float 69, team. I, I hope it's this one. Cheeky. Hey, Jez, you're on the street, mate. How's it all looking where you are? We've hit that crucial number, 69. Mate, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> But I tell you what, the police marching band is coming up here. Twelve and a half thousand reasons to smile. This is how many marches are coming up Oxford Street. And the crowd is absolutely loving it. Look at them. Let's say hello to these, this couple here. G'day, what's your name? Daniel. Catherine. How's your night going so far? Amazing. Highlights? Um, everything. It's just so, the atmosphere, the vibe, it's amazing. What's it like being back on Oxford Street? Sorry? It's incredible. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we came up here just for this. How are you going to be celebrating tonight? Oh, we are just going... Don't know. Don't know. The well, night is young. We'll go where the night takes us. Ooh, I look forward to seeing where that goes. Let's say day to someone else here. Hello, what's your Hello, name? Hello, my name's Alexandra. How's your night going, Alexandra? Great, I love it. What's the... Are the people around you... They're really enjoying it, aren't they? Look at them. It's great. And you've got a good position. How long have you been here for? I've been coming since the 90s. But today, how long have you been camping oh, out Oh, we've been here since about 1, one o'clock, 1.30. Someone else told me they've been here since 9am. Can you believe it? Incredible. Incredible. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? How's your night going? Amazing. What are your highlights so far? Everything, Everything. Just being here, being queer, being loved. Thank you so much. What does it mean to you to be here and to... I mean, I saw a few people tearing up. There are some yeah. really moving moments in this parade, aren't there? Just to be here with my love, my beautiful love. And just to be us, happy, and it's just amazing. And acceptability. You know, many years ago, people came before us, and this is what's here now. And like, these people amazing. march for us. Thank you to these people. Meeting people from all around Australia is just fantastic. And thanks to my mum for coming. This is my mum. Oh, hello, mum. Hello. hello. Yeah. Was it important for you to be here as well oh, tonight? absolutely. And this is my other daughter, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> very important. Very yeah. important. Why is that? Allies are very, very important in all of this. Not only to support my daughter and her partner, but the whole of the community. And it's wonderful to see how things have changed. Well, thank grown. you. Thank you for your very support. Very proud, very proud. What a lovely, lovely family. Look, there is so much love in the crowd. There really is. People are dancing, they're celebrating. They're dancing to like these 15 second clips of songs that come up the parade route. All of them absolute bangers. There's, take a look at this. This pup's having the time of her life. She's having the time of her life, my God. <laughs> Back to you guys. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <cute. laughs> oh. Totally tuck it out. Hey, but behind, while well, as Jess was talking to the crowd, they're getting the feel on the street. 
We've seen the New South Wales Police Force, the AFP as well, and there is some of 2010. And that was Q-Life that we just saw, the 50-year uh, birthday. Uh, that's for Q-Life. They've been supporting people around the country. It's a phone service and a web service to support LGBTQIA plus people around Australia, 50 years since it started, as we said earlier, in Peter Wilde's lounge room, originally right. called Phone And I, did anyone else notice those flames were rainbow? Yes. Oh. How did I, it, it, I, how? A, a flaming rainbow. Science, <laughs> my friends. Science. That's what I think. Uh, <laughs> oh, and here's a pillar. Everyday ability. Right, so Everyday Ability is a small disability service provider on the Central Coast and every part of this float has been designed and built by people living with disabilities. Look at them go. Absolutely oh. love it. Oh, there's Pop in the Go on. Oh, yeah. Go on, go. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You can do it. Get it. Go. Go on. Uh, you go can on. do it. I believe go on. Oh, my God. I can keep this up. Go on. Oh, Somebody help that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now I'm chipping with Anticent. Oh See? Hey, what did I say? Yes. What did I say? You need a hand? Yeah. You call a drag Yay. queen or a mascot. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> wow. That, that was good so intense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good on there. It's all, it's, well, uh, we've, we've got to keep this going. Here's the Tourette Syndrome Association Australia. They're a non-for-profit. They're really dedicated to supporting and improving their lives for people with Tourette's syndrome. Hey, why do I have an urge to buy a new car? <laughs> That were those. That was a car thing. Yeah, yeah it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Air dancer costumes. Air dancer That's what costume. they're called. <laughs> Isis. Isis wings and air dancer costumes. Yes, we're learning a lot tonight, right. aren't we? This aura. <laughs> Uh, and there are 30 participants in their float this year, all of them from the Tourette syndrome community. And I believe now we have their first ever float, ever. <laughs> Just want to re-emphasize that, it's yeah. the Forcibly Displaced People Network. And as you can see, well, their posters tonight split display sayings like queer refugees belong, trans refugees belong, intersex refugees belong. And you know, this again is part of the Sydney World Pride 2023 and it's an opportunity to shine a light on human rights issues facing our queer community all around the world. That's exactly Challenge. right. And justice. And, oh, and here is Rainbow, Rainbow Amnesty. Amnesty International Australia flowing straight on, dreaming of a free and equal world. I believe the key message of the float stems from Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is we are all born free and equal in dignity and rights. Isn't that correct? Now, people have travelled this year to Mardi Gras from all over. Northern stars of the NT have had one of the longest journeys to get here, travelling by sea, air and road, even though they live right here in Australia. <laughs> Mel Buttle caught up with them in the marshalling area. I'm joined by Daniel, the organiser of the Northern Stars float, who would have had their work cut out for them. Daniel, watch yourself on those pricks there, darling. Um, Daniel, what's the party scene like in the NT compared to here tonight? Well, look, the wonderful thing about Mardi Gras, the wonderful thing about Darwin, is that the kind of the rainbow community, it's not big enough to kind of splinter, if that makes sense. So everyone's in together, you know what I mean? Um, you know, there's the bears and the twinks and the lesbians, and we're all in uh, kind of, because there's just simply not the, not the critical mass to be able to have parties eat for everybody. So look, that's the wonderful feeling of community we have there, and that's really what we're trying to showcase here. And that's the idea of Mardi Gras, it's that everybody's in here together and that we're all one community. This is my first Mardi Gras, I, I have to be honest. Do you have any tips for me as someone who's fresh meat? <laughs> well, Mel, you always remember your first. So, <laughs> look, look, just enjoy yourself, really. I mean, the, once the parade starts, it sort of seems to be over so quickly. It's a bit like cooking, you know, you spend months and months preparing and then it's over in a kind of, it feels like a heartbeat. But yeah, just enjoy the moment. Enjoy the energy on the street. There's such a love crowd, you know, there's so much positivity and everybody's here to have a good time. So that's what I love about it. All right, I'll just be myself then, shall I? That's okay. The do it. That's the way to do it. Be yourself. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> be yourself. What, what a great advice. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the costumes. They're straight to the point. Oh, hello. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, I know what that it's is. and Gamble. They're trying to get my attention. <laughs> actually, actually it's, it's not that lot. Jack, trying to get your attention. It's the even noisier truck coming in right behind them. Oh. But, but, but let's, let's watch the Procter and Gamble people for a sec. Look at them having fun. Hey! Hello. Happy Mardi Gras! <laughs> Who 
else is going to have glitter coming out of everything for the next month? Oh, so this Wait. is Fire and Rescue New South Wales serving with courage, with care, and without judgment. Here come, here they come. And did you know this is the first time in Mardi Gras history that the truck is being driven by a woman? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. More confetti for this mob. <laughs> we all know how much they are loved in New South Wales. Absolutely, and don't they look <laughs> Disco tonight. Infernos, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, their pun was better than mine. We'll go with that. <laughs> are, they, are they bedazzled uniforms? Oh, yeah, of course they are. Well, what what is a bedazzling blind of you? <laughs> I don't know how fire safe they would be. <laughs> <laughs> Probably as fire safe as my pants I'm wearing right now. <laughs> but, look, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it because they're oh, right yeah. there. Yeah, oh. get that siren going. And it's the Rural Fire Service. Oh, that's right. What well, starts with an F and ends with a UCK? Nate! It's fire truck. Oh, oh my God. Guys, <laughs> <Fire. laughs> jeez. Hey, with this mob, we are in safe hands. Absolutely. They're marching tonight to get in front of a bushfire tanker, get it out with all smoke machines. Simulate bushfire smoke. It won't be too triggering, though. Not at all. And I believe they're going to donate all those cardboard fire trucks to a school for a production after this. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah. Seems very specific. No, did, okay. did you know that the New South Wales Rural Fire Service is the world's largest volunteer emergency service? Oh, there you little, go. little fact, little trivia. Little fun fact there for you. And I believe they've also taken part in every Mardi Gras since 2007. Wow! Oh, wow! Amazing. If only I had a calculator, I'd work out how long that was. <laughs> That's you don't need a calculator to tell. We've got a whole team on the job for you, oh, but okay. you do need to talk about this one. Who's this Hey, Jack, Jack, that was a very casual way of me telling you <laughs> to talk about this mob, but I'll do it. <laughs> We've got a special mention for this float. They are all ready to participate last year. This is New South Wales SES Pride, but they couldn't. Jack, why not? Uh, because I believe uh, they couldn't participate last year because of the extraordinary flooding, of course, yeah. that was going on in the impacted areas of New South Wales a year ago. It was, it was a year ago when it was all happening. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fantastic to see them here, and we celebrate you, and we're so happy that you're here marching this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, important. so, so important. I, I was here last year to add a nice casual week off before Mardi Gras I, at, you know, at, at the SCG, and of course that flooding was happening around Sydney. Uh, like, I grabbed a news camera, went and reported on it, and the New South Wales SES were there on the scene every time when I walked up, setting up, looking after people. And it's a shame they missed Mardi Gras, but it's so worth it to keep the community safe. And, Nate, I don't know, did you not let them know? They didn't need the umbrellas tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, you can, you can feel free to thank me anytime for the weather we've organised this evening. <laughs> it is absolutely stunning. It is not going to rain on this parade, which is good. It means that the umbrellas can be used for your choreography. Right. <laughs> 12 and 12 and 12 and 12. So again, this is a very, very big Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras parade because it is part of Sydney World Pride. We're expecting about 208 floats, I think. Yeah. Could uh, potentially be the biggest. Is someone keeping a tally? Uh, no, uh, darn. I'm sure someone is somewhere. Look, we'll track that down. We'll get the news crews on it. Uh, yeah, because they haven't kept really good records for all of the history of yeah. Mardi Gras, right? So it's pretty tricky, but I do understand this is at least we can say the biggest one in the last decade. But I reckon it's got to be up there. And we're back here on Oxford Street. Yes, we are, and the rest of the world is invited. And, you know, speaking of volunteers as well, it's actually what, over more than a 1,000 volunteers um, and crew members working tonight to, just, just to make the parade happen. I believe it's, it's what, the second biggest event in Sydney? Is it? I, I believe. I believe it was like the biggest one since the, the Olympics. Biggest. The 2000 Olympics. Oh no, every year. Oh, every yeah. year. Okay. So who we're looking at now is the Pride in Protest float. So as we know, our modern queer rights movement was born out of protest in the 70s and this group is continuing that tradition today. And you can see some of the uh, slogans they've got on their signs. Um, Stop police attacks on queers, women and blacks. So referencing some of those posters that were held up and chanted in the first Mardi Gras in 1978. No pride, incarceration, a lot of messages going there. Wow, how did they get that shot? Oh, I guess they were <laughs> under it. <laughs> so it's interesting seeing a lot of the intersectional queer issues coming through um, as part of this bloke. So they're standing up for allied communities as well as the queer community. So when we talk about intersectional things, so that, that means, you know, 
the rainbow is not a monolith, right? There are people who have all sorts of other minorities as well, so disabled or, or maybe a not white. Shock horror, you know, like, and, and each of those brings within with them their own specific challenges that Definitely. have to be overcome. Trans rights are human rights. What float might we be looking at right now? So okay, oh, here we go. It's C L A C C A U L C Sydney. Oh. There, says it right on the top there, <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, it's an interfaith community rights group, and their motto tonight is No Pride in Religious Transphobia, Equality Without Exemption Protest. That's horrible. But maybe <laughs> let's 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 switch gears very strongly. There's a big lemon on that truck, and it's the bush <laughs> lemons. They've been around for 27 years. Still a good squeeze. <laughs> As if you're not familiar, Bush Lemons, they are Blue Mountains based lesbian bushwalking and outdoor group founded in 1996. This one had a place for lesbians to meet. But why Lemons? I mean, I love this group name, Bush yeah. Lemons. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, lemons is another one of those words that was once used as a slur uh, yeah. against our community, against lesbians. Over the years, it's been reclaimed. They're using it as a term of pride and empowerment. So here we are, Bush Lemons in yeah. all their glory. And, and it's so great that, you know, they're, they're not bitter about it either. <laughs> oh, Jack. <laughs> You've nailed that, my no, man. You have yeah. absolutely oh, nailed that. Uh, girl! Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to say that. Girl. No, go on. We've got the... Uh, it's the girl guys. Oh! Or the oh, girl. hey, girl! Girl! I don't know if I'm doing that very no, well. I don't think either of us are, but it's okay. Yeah. You know, the, the Girl Guides Australia, they're an inclusive group um, of all women, and over the last couple of years, they've upped their efforts to ensure education is available for their leaders and members in order to ensure our queer youth and adults are accepted and included in the guide, so they are here for all women. And they lead the scouts, which is great. Love, Maybe. love the guides. Uh, g'day mate, oh, just having the best Mardi Gras. Yeah. They're just loving it. it. When you march down Oxford Street, you feel like an utter rock star and you can just see everyone yeah, experiencing that tonight. Scream at the crowd and the crowd responds like you are a famous person. It is wild. And here, yeah, right behind the girl guys, of course, Scouts. This is Scouts New South Wales. I was a scout once upon a time, believe it or not. No, we, believe it. we believe it. We believe it. Yeah, no. You're just so camp. Yeah, right, yeah, very camp. Yeah, Always camp, a sucker for a uniform, me. <laughs> Although I was a sea scout, you know. Later on, of course, becoming a naval officer, you don't mind. What does a sea scout? It's like a scout, but instead of going, well, I think it's going, going bushwalking, you went sailing. Oh, yeah. Woo. But it was good fun. Loved it. Yeah. And yeah. Right now we're seeing. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I've really got to stop the team. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. Thank you, thank you. Scouts, such, it's such a great place for kids. Uh, it's, when it's, you know, safe and inclusive, which the Scouts are, you know, just like the Girl Guys, really, really looking after Look at the beautiful signs. A Scout is trustworthy at the back. A Scout is considerate. A Scout cares for the others. The beautiful so, values. They are the Scout values. Dip, 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 job, job, job. You know it's you know. Do you know? What was that? Oh, no. Dip, 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 job, job, job. What's that? What? Oh, gosh. I think okay. you okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm better than, than this lot after a big night on Oxford Street. <laughs> all right, so putting all our flexibility, especially me, to shame, tumbling down Oxford Street is Gymnastics Australia. They're pulling out all the moves tonight from rhythmic gymnastics to acrobatics. And some good waving as well. And some good, the, the <laughs> trickiest of the gymnastics. <laughs> Great. Oh, look, I can see the um, the ribbons. <gasps> I love the ribbons. <laughs> That's a sport I feel like I could do. Right? <laughs> yes. You reckon you could represent Australia? Look, I'm, I ribbon? probably shouldn't. Oh, maybe. maybe. I'm quite, I've, I've got the height for a gymnast, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they're going all the way up, up the street like that. Meanwhile, what's black and white and rainbow all over? Or it's P. Oh, well, sorry? I was going to say a gay newspaper. Oh, huh? that, well, that would do it, but no. <laughs> it's P Flag Sydney. Oh. That's parents, families, friends of lesbians and gays here in Sydney. The nation's first and largest organisation dedicated to supporting, educating, and advocating for queer people and 
for those who love them. Yes. This is another one of those floats where I get choked up when they march by. Because, yeah. you know, life can be tough out there for young queer people. And to know that you have the support of your, your family and your friends, it means so much. It's not something that we can all enjoy, that's for sure. All right, a feast for our eyes and our vocational skills. Check out TAFE New South Wales's float. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to see something very creative. So their float is from the Design Centre in Enmore, New South Wales. Very good. Right, so so these are all TAFE students, right? Well, Mon, I think you should you should just snip out there very quickly because um, you've done enough work, right? You can get a search for in Mardi Gras. You reckon? Yes. <laughs> I'll own It'd be that. very good teaching us all. <laughs> You're <laughs> obviously overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, they might look dead, but I am living for oh. these costumes. So this is like a Day of the Dead sort of vibe, oh. is it? Oh, right. I thought it was just puppets, because everyone loves puppets. <laughs> OK. Wow, they, they are incredible. Cool. Cool. Wow. I mean, is that David Bowie? It definitely yeah. is. Oh, oh, and then we've okay. got Gaga in the meat dress. I get it. So we can we can find some queer icons here, can we? Oh, fantastic. Oh. I think that was Kylie. Oh, that was she's in song. there somewhere. Kylie! <laughs> hey, all aboard! It's Marine Rescue New South Wales. A oh, bit of a panto going on on this flight, actually. Feel that beat. Good tune. Yeah. Rescue Me by One Republic. Good choice. Did they not get the memo they could have wheels? <laughs> <laughs> So Marine Rescue New South Wales is a charity that provides emergency response to the boating community, saving hundreds of lives annually. Hey team, three people who are even more talented than we are. Did you know this? Zinzi has managed to wrangle international pop trio, the Sugar what? Babes. Oh, Zinz. Get out. What? what? I am here no. with the Sugar Babes and teenage Zinzi is screaming. <laughs> How are you feeling? Have you been to Mardi Gras before? No, it's my first, our first time, but I'm so excited. This is so exciting. So the last time you were in Australia was 20 years ago, is that right? Yeah. It's been years. We haven't been here in forever. We're so happy to be back. It's been amazing. We played Sydney on our tour. We've got Brisbane at Fortune Hall. So Monday. Amazing, amazing. I'm just so excited that you got to claim your name back. That must have felt really good. Amazing. I mean, it was about time. Exactly. The fans are loving the reunion. You've been performing together since you were teenagers, I think. How does it feel to be back together and selling out shows around the world? I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's totally not lost on us. It's an incredible experience. I mean, even just like we come to the other side of the world again and getting to do all of this again and we're here and it's Mardi Gras. I mean, it's just insane. We love it. We love it. We're not couldn't ask for more. Yeah, exactly. I think everybody's so excited to just be out and about. You're playing the official Mardi Gras party tonight or early in the morning. <laughs> we're so happy to have you here. Thank you. No, we're really, really excited. Thank you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Can you believe it? Blast from the past. The actual yes. sugar babe. I know. Oh. Oh, Zins is getting all of the best action, so we're going to keep a close eye on her. Hey, Transport for New South Wales just went by, and, uh... Oh! Who are these people? Shh, guys. Oh, what, 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 what? It's the librarians! <laughs> oh, OK. Tonight, these librarians want to smash through stereotypes and show that libraries are places where you can be heard and have your voice amplified, well, contrary why, to popular belief. Well, why did you just shush me then, Mike? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's so confusing. So many mixed messages. <laughs> oh, I, I'm hoping there's going to be a bit of a hush falling over the Taylor Square bit here, because I want to hear, hear this music. They've got oh. Bjork on. It's always so quiet. Oh, oh very fitting. <laughs> very fitting. <laughs> what a great float design, though. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Choreography, loving that. Absolutely. I feel like they've definitely had their lips done, though. They're huge. <laughs> no shame, no shame. No shame. <laughs> oh. Glitter babe. Here they come. So I think 
This float is based on the sapphic diaries of Anne Lister. Her diaries were found hidden in the panels of her home um, and were about her life in the 1800s. Oh, that explains the giant book. <laughs> or diaries, I guess. <laughs> oh, Jack, you are so good at saying what you see. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks, I love it. It's taken me years to perfect that skill. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the diaries were read in a way that needed to be decoded, right? Because obviously, well, not obviously, but to some perhaps, but you had to be really secretive about your queerness in the past. So Anne was writing about her affairs with women. She later married Anne Walker, and that was the first known lesbian marriage. Oh, wow. Yeah. See what they're wearing. It's a, it's a modern sleeveless, and they're still walking. Oh. Oh, fantastic. Here, what have we got here, Jack? This is the Bobby Goldsmith Foundation, and they're honouring the past and looking to the future. And they're just sailing on by, Ooh. aren't they? Can you feel that heat from the fire? Oh, oh my God. This is epic. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you can see it ah. on the screen there. <laughs> Again, oh. these pants are very highly flammable. They are. <laughs> Luckily, you are the furthest away possible. <laughs> so, as you can see on their float, they're supporting people with HIV since 1984, they're Australia's oldest HIV AIDS charity. Wonderful. Sorry, life boy, big life boy on the back of the truck. That symbolises what they mean, absolutely. And we're going to keep it in both things. All right, so stroking their way down the parade route is the Different Strokes Dragon Boat Club. Oh my God, that looks incredible. Wow. Epic. Dragon on top there. Oh, it's blowing smoke box. Oh my God. Oh. Can we always feel that on the backs of our necks? Yeah. yeah. So Different Strokes is a Sydney-based club that was formed in 2008 with the aim of providing a social and fitness-focused sporting outlet for the LGBTQIA plus community, as well as their friends, family and supporters. Wait, dragon boats. How do you how do you ride a dragon? How do you control that? Jack. <laughs> well, Jack, you watch out because we're keeping it wet. Oh. It's no. stinger season. Nice. Ah. Uh, for well, the Sydney stingers. Oh. <laughs> They're a well-known part of the Sydney LGBTQIA plus sporting and water polo communities. And their costumes are certainly keeping it free. They're incredibly. You need to be into sports to be able to look this good. They, this they good. look very fit. What a, what a poly must be such a hard sport. I swim 20 metres and I sink. Yeah. They, you know, they... <laughs> <laughs> it always amazes me how they just leap bird, like from a standing start at shoulders underneath the water. So all of a sudden, well, it's essentially like they've got just, just their tiptoes in the water. You know, they leap that far out. Yeah. And, and do they always have that much glitter on when they're playing? <laughs> really Is that like to distract that. the other team? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. You know, I've really noticed over the last couple of years, especially, that gay representation and queer representation in sport is really starting to pick up and really get more public focus. Fantastic, and we're seeing you know folks like George Cavallo come exactly, out, yeah. you know, pioneers of visibility. It's Absolutely. brilliant. Yeah. All right, so up next, it's the New South Wales Teachers Federation. Um, they're a union for public education teachers. Oh, I love a teacher. Love uh, a teacher. Tonight, uh, their float's taking shape of a progress coloured glittery apple on a bed of shining clouds oh, wow. because. Oh. I don't know. I never gave a, an apple to a teacher, but it's still a thing, apparently, it? somewhere. <laughs> well, it is tonight. As long as it's a glitter progress apple, I think. Can we right. get confirmation on that apple thing? <laughs> yeah. You know, some members of the, the New South Wales Teachers Federation took part in those demonstrations in 1978, um, and they continued to fight for equity and inclusion within education and the broader community. We love a person in uniform, don't we? Yes, this, we do. This has to be Department of Defence, surely. Oh, look, there are some of my former colleagues. Of course, I was a naval officer. I don't yeah. know if everybody knows. I'm actually going to stand up and give them away Yay. because I love their work. Absolutely. <laughs> Department of Defence, people in uniform marching down Oxford Street. Mate, did you ever get to march in uniform? Didn't. No. I didn't. But only because I was working too hard. Uh, I, I have forecasting to do, <laughs> but ever since, ever since I have been here, I, I catch up with them every year. Are, are you moved when you see them marching? Ab absolutely, absolutely. I mean, depends. It's, it's a pretty, it's pretty equal place anyway, but it's good to see them proud enough to be on the street, just like this one. Oh, the Sydney convict. 
The Sydney Convicts say, I, I believe they're Australia's first and world's most successful gay and inclusive rugby club. Yeah, Another they sport. are. Oh yeah, look at, yeah, there you go. The rugby shorts are giving it away. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and tonight they're, uh, they're marching in a jersey designed by Rotary Man and New South Wales Morris Half player, Dylan Peach. Oh. Stunning jersey, I am here for it, absolutely. And their float is called Game of Dreams. Gay of drinks, game. but game. Oh. What, is, what is your game of your dreams, Mon? Well, I'm a soccer player, you know? Uh, okay, I, okay. I could have no, given no, you a, a ridiculous there, answer, look. but I just love soccer. We'll let them clear away then. It's all good. <laughs> and, and, and talk about, oh, maybe something a little more comfortable. Oh, the oh. Harbour City Bears and the Bears of Australasia. <laughs> Um, so, for the folks at home, uh, what is a bear? Guys, can you enlighten me here? Uh, it's exactly what you're seeing here. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. O yeah. Often, often not, not the uh, muscle-bound, although no, occasionally, but occasionally. often not the, the muscle-bound gays, but oh. here, some who are... Hair is a requirement. Yeah, you absolutely hair. have to be hairy, yeah. beard is preferred, and yeah, a little bit squishy. There are also <laughs> all, like a broad spectrum of bears. Oh, There's there not are. just one bear. No, there are um, like, personally, I'm unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to think I'm bearable. <laughs> <laughs> and this float is made up of some of the, the bear groups from right across Australia. Big Bears, Bruce Bears, huh? the Bear Men of Adelaide, Bears Perth, Tassie Bears. Bear New Zealand, basically, if you're a bear in Australia, there's a community group you can be part of. No bears left out. Oh. <laughs> Well, I can't see any koala bears. <laughs> oh, there is. There will 100% be a koala bear in there somewhere. Oh, trust me. There is a bear in there, isn't there? <laughs> and a ch no. No chips. No, wrong show. Wrong show. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and here we have... Oh, lift your tails. It's examination time. <laughs> for your pets. For your pets, obviously. It's the Australian Rainbow Veterinarians and Allies. Oh, that Was that a massive Pegasus I just saw flying through? Do you think it's a coincidence that they're coming after the bears? <laughs> Surely. Just in case we end up with a poorly bear, they'll just hop straight in and fix them right up. Yes. <laughs> oh, I just love, love, love how... I mean, who would have thought, right, that there would be a, a group of gay veterinarians who were think, thinking, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop it. Oh, it's the PM. Down Oxford on. Street. Oh, who thought until a couple of weeks ago that even we'd have a Prime Minister marching down Oxford Street? This, this, this is, is a moment. This is yeah. a moment. So this, this is, is Rainbow is. Labor New South Wales, and they're an advocacy group within the Labor Party for LGBTQIA plus equality. And, of course, at the head there, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, who just announced that he would be the first sitting Australian Prime Minister to participate in a Mardi Gras parade. What an historic moment. For this good, does yeah. mean a lot to LGBTQIA plus really people Jez is on the side of the size. I'm going to try that again. Jez is on the side of the road. He's going to be talking to the Prime Minister. Jez, can you see the man? I can. He's somewhere. Where is he? Gosh, he's being mobbed <laughs> by the crowd. <laughs> Very popular man, Anthony hey, hey, Albanese. Hey. Welcome to Mardi Gras 45. How, how fantastic is this? You're no stranger to, you've marched before, you've marched in Mardi Gras before, but as Prime I Minister. I think this is my 35th Mardi Gras. Uh, the, the first, first one, one was 1983. I'm showing my age there. <laughs> but first one as Prime Minister, that is a significant moment. Well, it's uh, a, a moment that it's unfortunate that I am the first, but this is a celebration of modern Australia. We're a diverse, inclusive Australia, and that's a good thing. What's the reception been like for you tonight as Prime Minister? Oh, it's been awesome. People, people want to see that their government is inclusive and represents everyone, no matter who they love, no matter what their identity, no matter where they live, we need to be a country that respects everyone for who they are. What do you think are the fights yet to be had? We've got marriage equality now. In terms of what you see change in the future holding, what would that be? Well, it's, it's 45 years, of course, 
and we need to pay tribute tonight and think about the 78ers who were thrown in jail for the simple fact of who they were because they happened to be gay or lesbian. And uh, well, it's five years since marriage equality. Uh, that was a demand that wasn't there 45 years ago. So we need to continue to argue for equality. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your night. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Wow. Wow. That is a news-making moment. That is really, truly a big deal. It, it sure is. It really is. It really is. Yeah. That is the nation's leader standing up, walking with us, and telling us that we matter. Yes, love to see Incredible. it. Incredible. And with, while that was going on, we also saw the Inner City Legal Centre coming through, as well as American Express really expressing themselves. <laughs> but right now, it's the New City Church, I believe. So Jesus loves a rainbow revolution? <laughs> the New City sure Church. Does. So the church was founded in 2020 by five queer Christians who all felt excluded from their own churches growing up. So they started a new one. Uh, Steph Fenton is one of the pastors at that church. Uh, Steph is a fantastic you know, beacon of visibility in our community here. 80% of church members identify as part of the LGBTQI plus community, including the pastors in that church. Oh, that, that's so special, but I've got to tell you, this is special. We love Britney. Britney. Yes, we do. We love Britney, and so do DIY Rainbow. Oh, wow. Look, I mean, I mean, pick your favourite Britney. Surely this is like a record for the most Britneys. At one. Do you think Britney Spears is actually there? Oh, I might I not feel have to keep it close by, yes. <laughs> oh, well, that's definitely not one on the left there. No, no, no not the real one. No, not there, no. So, you know, this group started in protest of the removal of the Sydney Rainbow Crossing in 2013. Oh. So, they chalked up their own rainbow crossings in Surrey Hills and then just keep, you know, chalking up rainbow crossings everywhere. So, why yeah. so rainbow? The rainbow crossing is a really big feature of this area right at this time. And, hey, tonight, for the first year, the Sydney Swans Women's AFL League is marching with the Men's League and our mastering area correspondent, Mel Buttle, caught up with them earlier. Here we are, the Sydney Swans who play sports ball, I'm told. Lisa, you have a lot of stamina being an athlete. I don't think I'm going to last a night at Mardi Gras. Any tips for our first Mardi Gras? Yeah, just that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Keep drinking water, keep dancing all night, keep the vibes high and you'll be fine. Should I eat an orange every 25 minutes? 100%. Lisa, let's give it a big woohoo Mardi Gras to kick us off tonight. One, two, three, Mardi Gras, woo! Woo! -hoo! Hey! Hey! Cheer, cheer, the red and the white. Oh. Now, now, okay, Jack, hold yourself back. If, oh. I, if I hear you singing, <laughs> you are going to be in big trouble. Uh, I can't help it. You know, my oh, doorbell at my parents was the Sydney Swans theme. So it's quite a long time. It's embedded in me. <laughs> Go on then. Let it out if you have cheer, to. Cheer, cheer the red and the white. <laughs> and that's it. No more. <laughs> okay. Nah, Mo Mon's, Mon's on the job. She's going to cut you off. Oh, they're going to cut you off totally. <laughs> um, Sydney Swans. How do you feel about it, Mon? I, I mean, I just love football teams being part of Mardi Gras. You know, interestingly, we don't have any openly gay male footy players in our league, which is kind of ridiculous because just knowing the percentage of queer folk in the community, some of those players are going to be gay, queer, part of the community just like us. However, the women's league are really leading the way in terms of queer visibility. There are out queer footy players in the AFLW as there are in many of the other AFLW teams. So, you know, go girls. And also yeah. non-binary players too, it's really inclusive. And, and moving on to another sport, it's the Sydney Hookers Boxing Club. That's hook, as in boxing that one. punch. <laughs> that one, yeah, yeah that right, one, right. that one. Oh no, actually, that was then uppercuts. What, oh. which, which other punches do you know? What's that one? Uh, the ones, uh, well, I don't quite know, but I do know you can do a lot of damage with a look. Yes. <laughs> as opposed to a hook. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Uh, but the Sydney Hookers, they uh, apparently they're the only LGBTQIA plus boxing club, um, not only in the Mardi Gras parade, but yeah. in the Southern Hemisphere. What? In the Southern Hemisphere? All right. Well, we've got to get that sorted. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. All right. This is the, the fabulous oh. 
Wonder Mama and the Intergay Lactic enforces against homophobia push down Oxford Street in a spaceship. What a way to do it. Oh! Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> the Intergay Lactic enforces against... Oh, I know, yes. Hey, Wonder Mama. Oh, and uh, just with a team of, of absolute superheroes around it. E.T. Phone Homo. <laughs> you know, Wonder, Wonder Mama, who's right there in the front there, in the red, uh, first appeared at Mardi Gras Parade in 2014. He's been here every single parade since. I've, I've met Wonder Mama several times, and it's always an absolute delight. And I believe they also had a hand in um, the, Sydney World Pride, the Sydney World Pride bid. Oh, we oh, wow. we yeah. sent an army of people to go and bid for us. I, so, so amazing. Uh, that we managed to get here. And it, and it wasn't just, of course, Wonder Mama, but lots of people, including Nana, Miss Puri, who uh, welcomed us to country right at the start of the parade. So wonderful. Oh, by the way, here's some famous people for you, young. If, you, if you're a bit younger, you might recognise some of these faces. This is Meta doing their thing. Uh, sorry, of course, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, you know, the whole uh -huh. shebang. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. so there, there are some people on here uh, because it's 2023 and this is what we do. You can see them creating oh, content. Milo on the left. So oh. these must be a lot of social media creators. Exactly. I'm going to wave at them just in case some of them put me in their reels and whatever whatever it is these young kids are doing these days. I'm sure all the young people watching tonight know exactly who all these people are. Yeah, I'll be waving. Hello. <laughs> Oh wow, some good music going on, good tunes. <laughs> are they live posting? Are they live streaming? They, they are, surely, yes, some of them. Uh, you, can, you can watch us and on your screen, watch them going past us. Oh, it's, it's all happening at the same time. <laughs> oh, and here is We're As Woke. Right, so this is a group of costume makers and artists who used to make costumes for Mardi Gras in the 80s and 90s, and now they've come back together because it's World Pride. Oh. Get in. Yeah, we go back. Whoa. Oh, oh and then of course, course Pride. Yeah, Chicago so Pride. Another international entry in the Mardi Gras again because it's Sydney World Pride all the way from the Windy City. Chicago Pride, and Chicago is bidding for World Pride in 2029. Oh, should we start planning our trip now? Perhaps? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> best, best of luck to the Windy City. Yes. So this float, they're showcasing um, LGBTQ Chicago monuments. And if you're not familiar, I can take you through oh, what they are. Please. So on either side is a Chicago theatre sign with yes. the words, love is love in sweet home Chicago, as you can see. Uh, rainbow pylons, which make up the largest outdoor LGBTQ museum. Uh, but the main focal piece being the iconic sculpture Cloud Gate. Where is that? Cloud well, that's Gate. that thing there. Okay, oh. covered in rainbow lights. Oh, there you go. That's How appropriate. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the pillars look a little suggestive, I'll just say. Oh, 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 let me quickly move on because it's Jack. Oh, 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 so. Whoa. <laughs> I should, I've got to stop singing, don't I? Um, yeah, it's Newcastle Pride, um, very close to my heart. I was born, raised, survived Newcastle. <laughs> um, and they're here marching. I wonder if I recognise any. Hey, no, no. Okay, no, you, you keep your eyes on okay, the screen. I'll keep it because I, I do, if you see someone, I want you to yell out and say good day to them. Uh, they've, they're here, they're queer, they're ready to, well, to float. This the SS Destiny Gang. So it includes a couple of things on the float that's coming through. And uh, uh, well, oh. that came through at the head. Hey, and look, all kinds of... Little Mermaid got, uh, <laughs> got the legs and the tail. tail. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll oh. see you, Newey. I'll see you tomorrow. See you, Newey. <laughs> oh, this this is my favourite, I think. I hope. Let's... Look, the next float. This wow. has Australia's youngest drag queen on board. This is Logan Kelly. <gasps> or AKA Candy Featherbottom. Yeah, incredible. I found a story on the ABC about Candy uh, from a couple of years ago when she was 13 and already a drag performer. Look at her. He's still like 15. Well, well, he's 15 now, yeah. uh, I believe, and then was 13 at the time of the article, I believe. Right, right, right. But look, writing a, an amazing thing called a nudie branch. 
A what? Well, if you heard something called a nerdy brunch, can you just jump straight on? It's a brightly <laughs> coloured sea slug, of course. If this it one... looks that fabulous, yeah. Yeah, this one is a little bit bigger than normal. But, oh, so good to see you, Candy. Right, OK, and now we have Coastal Twist LGBTIQ Arts and Culture Festival. They're looking out of this world. Oh, oh they sure are. So the, these folks are a cultural festival which is run at the end of September each year on the central coast of New South Wales. And their theme tonight uh, was Galactic Transplanetary Universal with a unique Aussie twist. Oh, oh, like, oh is that the Opera House on the shoulders? Ah, nice. Oh, hey. Nice. I did see somebody with a third eye and I did. And my <laughs> mind went straight back to Newcastle. <laughs> and back in Dang. 2021, they oh. were finalists for Best Float Design. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah, fireworks. They are very close. <gasps> oh, oh. Hey, fireworks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they're rainbow. Oh, my god. Oh, they are so cool. So okay. they're shooting off the roof oh, of the, wow. the courthouse hotel here at Taylor Square. Right next to it. Oh, wow. Is it not convenient that that's happening at the same time the parade is on? <laughs> yeah, Oh, my God. Imagine. Yeah, people would be very confused. Very if confused. If it was just 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but it should happen all the time, I reckon. <laughs> Spectacular. Oh, what have we missed in the meantime? There you go. Look at those. Oh, it's not just our roof. Oh, Maybe it's also coming off the top of our actual <laughs> well, Who knows? <laughs> oh. Yes, such celebration. Uh, and next up we have Gay Pride Australia, which is a Facebook page, community group, uh, who host rallies, community gatherings, um, equality marches and, and events like that. And that, oh, that's Mickey and Minnie. Oh, hey, Minnie. Hey, Mickey. I think there's a bit of a Disney thing. Yeah, it's right definitely a thing. I, I recognise those horns anywhere. <laughs> we have Absolutely. Oh, oh my wow. God. Oh, That's actually, incredible. you know what this could be? What's that ride the where the song gets stuck in your head? Oh. It's oh. a small world. <laughs> oh, I said I wouldn't <laughs> sing anymore. I okay. reckon, yeah. No, no, no. Don't sing. Because now we've got the Australian New Zealand Tongsi Rainbow Alliance founded to celebrate and embrace diversity, but most importantly, become a point of contact and support for Mandarin and Cantonese speaking queer community members, particularly migrants, international students and other newly arrived di diasporas. Hey. You know, it can be really hard when you're in a country where their main language isn't your first language and you need support, especially when you're from uh, not only a minority group, but a minority group within that minority group. So thank you, Andra, with... Oh, oh. Check out this absolutely stunning dragon dancing wow. behind. Oh, oh, oh the rainbow oh, flames! Rainbow oh. flames! Oh my gosh! They've got one of everything here. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. Oh, and it's you. Okay, so up next it's Flag Com friends. So they formed 12 years ago to be the active voice of the Filipino LGBTQIA plus community. Um, I hate to be a size queen, but geez, everything is really big on this float as we are about to see. You are a size queen, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what, what's that on there? <laughs> you like that one, did you? <laughs> wow. They're looking great. Absolutely yeah. incredible. And look, if you're not going to wear a giant flower, then you just may as well wear a ball gown and a tiara. <laughs> yeah. One or the other, really, at Mardi Gras. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Oh, hi. Miss Mardi Gras International Queen 2023. Oh, wow. Wow. We're amongst royalty. Oh, look, there are more queens here than uh, <laughs> I think have uh, ever existed in uh, all of time. I mean, I think at Mardi Gras it's fair to say there's more queens here than have ever existed <laughs> yeah. in all of time. So they've, been, they've become synonymous with organising events, especially the annual transgender pageant. That's awesome. There it is, Taylor Square. The crowd not flagging one bit. Absolutely. I mean, look how deep they are along Oxford Street there on the right. Taylor Square is the point where the parade turns and then goes up Flinders Street to, towards well, where the SCG is, where we were marching for the last couple of years. The crowd here absolutely pumping. Now, I've got a story for this next one. Oh. Oh. Media. Yes. <laughs> you, you've nailed that. Thank you. 
on this boat last last night at Lion and Proud, I met a lovely young man. His name's Finn. Now Finn's a trans man. And he's been in existence for less than a year and is here tonight at his first Mardi Gras. Aww. And he was beside himself with excitement. Just Finn is a young fellow. I'll tell you if I if I see him. He's in there somewhere. But hey, Finn, big shout out from me to you. Uh, really lovely to meet you. And uh, hey, welcome, welcome to the family. <laughs> Such a special moment, you know, marching for the first time. I remember when I marched well, but again, yeah. it was in the Ducks on Push Bikes float. It's just like, you do feel like a rock star, but it's just like being unashamedly who you are and getting that reception from the people in the crowd. It's just so affirming. Marching up the street really gets your heart rate up, just like Queer Zumba Dance Fitness, a Canberra-based community group. And look, there is something about Mardi Gras that has connected deeply with people as it has evolved over the last 45 years. And one of those people is Aron Meeks, whose dying wish is being fulfilled tonight by family and friends. Aron is a well-beating artist, educator and community leader. He had successful exhibitions all around Australia and overseas. He also did a whole lot of advocacy. You know, in the 90s, anybody admitting that HIV was a big deal, but an Aboriginal gay person admitting and talking about it was particularly radical. And so for many queer Aboriginal people, he was a leading light, helping young people just be themselves and not be ashamed. He often did that through his art. He used art as the universal language to get across really sensitive messages and help people explore their own identities. So he leaves, yeah, huge legacies. He's very well loved all over Australia and many parts of the world. Aron uh, passed away way too young in 2021 and his three life wishes before he passed were to have a piece of public art in Sydney, a piece of public art in Cairns and a float in Mardi Gras. He achieved the first two, never quite got to finish the third one but we're going to finish it for him. One of his you know, most well-known stories is this Enora and the Black Crane. That's going to serve as the inspiration for the float and so I think it's a beautiful story for Mardi Gras to do that from a black perspective with as much colour as you can. Aron, love you. We're helping you finish your last dream. But as you taught us, the dreaming continues. Oh, I have goosebumps. Wow. So oh, what a beautiful story. And Aron finally getting to march in Mardi Gras. Look how stunning that is as well. What a beautiful tribute. Absolutely. Aron would be just so so stoked and so damn proud of his friends and his family. Okay, so here we have Phantom. It's P-H-A-N-T-O-M, so it's an acronym for Pansexual Humans Advocacy Network Towards Orientation Mutuality. That's a lot, Phantom Phantom <laughs> does me. That, that, that's all good. So yeah. basically they're an online-based community group that advocates for people of diverse genders and sexuality, and the marchers are all wearing pink, yellow and blue costumes, which are the colours of the pansexual flag. Oh. There we go. Some more colours for you there, Jack. I, 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 do, I do love an, an initialism that really feels like you've had to use a shoehorn to get it on. <laughs> Re reversed in engineered. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hey, step aside, Bears. This time it's Gorillas for Gay Liberation. I think we just have, saw them very briefly. Oh, now it's Forbidden very Fruits. Briefly. Yeah, well, we're going to get back to Gareth Ernest, hopefully. I'm watching, I'll be watching the screens because Forbidden Fruits, we're also absolutely loving. Yes, it's a curious and cosmopolitan cornucopia fruit. And they're a group of family and friends who represent a diverse range of, range of ethnic, cultural, religious and sexual backgrounds. I love it. Of course, Charlie XEX last night. Yeah, absolutely. With that song. <gasps> Meanwhile, team, get ready to geek out. Uh, Here they are. <laughs> it's the C-S-I-R-O. Syro, happy Mardi Gras to you. This vote tonight, celebrating the geek. We've got overalls, we've got glasses, we've got high socks, and we've got loads of fluoro colour. It's a 
very sexy scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but probably very dangerous to do experiments in I. <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, escalate chemical on your exposed stomach. Yes. <laughs> I'm seeing some some people that I know well. Bry the fly guys in there. G'day, mate. Oh. Yeah. He's, he's uh, there. He is right oh. in front there. He named a fly after Beyonce. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. Thank Which, you. Is she okay with that? <laughs> yeah, well, I, absolutely. I don't, it's, it's got a really lovely bar. Oh, look, now, <laughs> you two, the gays are always held up on stylish tennis balls, and this float is no exception. It's Architect Mr. Fry. Oh, hello, Architect. Hello. What's your building there? <laughs> oh, actually, yeah. If you, if you want something built, you want an architect to do it, of course. And everything looks pretty structurally sound to me. <laughs> Oh, oh. It's a hotel. Oh, OK. So there's nothing like waking up in a, a stranger's hotel bed the morning after the parade. Is that right, boys? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, but it's only Put because I had the wrong room key, all right? Uh, I, I tried <laughs> to kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> it, it is always danger on uh, Mardi Gras, though. Oh, yes. Oh, no. No place I'd rather be. Nate's bed right now. But no, right now. no, 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 I'm here. I'm exactly where I want to be. They are turning this out, aren't they? This Absolutely. Is very cool. Incredible choreography there. I would probably be not want to be part of that one. Oh, look, it's not an Aussie celebration until the PAV has arrived. It's oh. Emerald City kickball. <laughs> and I do believe this is a a, a giant pavlova, and there's all the fruits. <laughs> oh, I'll check. Not a slur. <laughs> no, I just a fact. Just a fact. He started using my re reclaimed yeah. word of yeah. choice. I love it. I haven't played kickball since primary school. Oh, really? Yeah, that was a great game. Oh, I <laughs> hate when I get a kickball. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> Hey, would you, you ever dress like this one for, uh, for a quick game of kickball as an eight-year-old? Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, no, the peas come off. <laughs> it looks to be sold. So I also love the, the interpretation of the rainbow in this because, of course, it's the different fruits. Strawberry, oh, red, peach, yes. mango, oh, kiwi fruit, there you blueberry. Go. Do you, you want to keep going? Passion <laughs> fruit. The rainbow here. Now, like, yeah, now you've got a bit of, a bit of height. Get in the helicopter to really... Really see how that float works. Yeah, yeah. Look at the colours all projected onto Oxford Street. It certainly is a, a rainbow occasion. Definitely. Oh, I, I am loving this team. Um, we are, I reckon, officially, we're over halfway through. We're over oh, halfway wow. through. Now, it might be the downhill run, but <laughs> there is still Never. a heck of a lot to get yeah. through. So much fun to be had. Oh, there's is that some coconut and some blackberries. <laughs> Oh. I always love to think what they're thinking when they do it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> around and around. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. They're doing very well. And Emerald City Kickball, they've only been around for three years. They, they started in 2020 as a project between friends to find a, a safe and affirming way to create the inclusive community during COVID-19. Oh, I have it on good authority. That is 1.6 kilometres of ruffles. <laughs> and more than 3,000 hours of work. But right behind them comes a little battle with the Sassy Chariot. Oh, they're a collective of artists from all around the world that take part in art shows and installations and performances. They've got one goal, and that's their love for human connection and self-expression. Tonight, they are handing out love letters, team, of affirmations to punters as they go down the street. So, little love letters for, for everyone. You, you that's, that's, that's a lovely gesture. It is. It really is. Anyone can get like that. Anyone at all? Anyone? <laughs> Jack, oh, imagine, imagine oh, if someone, I think we have some love letters here Ooh. that we've just received. Oh. Look, there's one for you, Mum. There's oh, one for you. Nate. That's lovely. What, what do they say? Oh, well, let's have a look. So these, these are examples, real examples. Um, so there are no strangers here. Only friends you haven't yet met. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful message. Okay, what does mine say? Um, roses are red, violets are blue. The sassy chariot's love is being spread, and I am so in love with you. Oh, Me? Yeah. Oh. Well, I've got one, um, and mine is... Oh, mine's just a picture of you, Nate, that sign. <laughs> right the thing, yeah, sorry, I uh, may have left a few of those around uh, Oxford <laughs> Street. You can't move for the things. Are you okay, Jack? 
Are you oh, okay? I'm better than okay. I'm, oh. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that better. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's Are uh, You Okay? So you saw him right behind us there. Uh, it, it, conversation can change a life. And it's so, so important to take the time to ask someone if they're doing okay. That's right. This is their seventh year in the parade. And who might this be? I think this Ooh. is Freedom Angels. They look incredible. Definitely have friends in high places. <laughs> Check out some of those heels. How yeah. do they compare to yours, Nate? Um, I, I look, I have heels that high. Um, this year, I'm glad I'm not marching down the road because I think mine do beat them just a little bit. But their hair's higher, so uh, closer look, to God. Right. Let's get out a measuring tape and we can, <laughs> we can finish this once and for all. I absolutely all. will not be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing costume. Amount of work. I mean, just plucking all the feathers out of those birds. <laughs> So yeah, the main, just, just to explain, they're a group of Southeast Asian gay and lesbian and trans people that celebrate Mardi Gras to express their support and pride. So, so welcome. More sport. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why do I get all the sport ones? <laughs> you love it. I do love it. I secretly love it. It's Australia's first and largest bent sticks, the bent sticks hockey club. Hockey. There you go. If I play hockey? What do you think, Mon? <laughs> <laughs> I used to play hockey. I quite enjoyed it when I was a kid. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, Mon was doing kickball. I was out there with a bent stick, so to speak. Yes, and I was at home watching the nanny. <laughs> <laughs> that in itself is a sport, Jack. That is true. You very call yourself true. an Olympian. <laughs> They're a very successful club as well. They got gold at the 2018 Miami Out Games and in 2019 at Paris. Oh, That's when I played soccer. We definitely didn't get gold. Now that's there a landmark I reckon you recognise. The city that you see rolling down Oxford Street there. Absolute icon. Sydney Opera House. So their float is reclaiming the colour pink, the original gay rights colour, of course. He talked about that earlier. The 78ers have that as their symbol. Zinzi is on the street for us since the parade, obviously well and truly underway. How is it looking down there? It's amazing. I'm just trying to learn every single bit of choreography that I can, basically. <laughs> the best thing about Mardi Gras, I feel, is just that there is a float for everyone. I've got some amazing people here. What's been your favourite float so far? My favourite float? Oh my goodness, there's just been so too many. I can't, I can't say that. No, that's not fair. Yeah, that's Sorry, I asked you a terrible question. What does it mean to you to be here at World Pride? Uh, still fighting for our rights, to be honest. Like, we still have to stand up every day. You go to the public toilet and... You still get the weird look wearing a hat and a trumpet and be like, oh, this is a ladies' toilet. So I guess that's what we're here for. I'm having like my pronouns as she, her, and as long as I got a vagina and boobs, I can go to whatever bathroom I want to. Absolutely love it. We're here for safety and inclusion, and that's what's most important to our community. It is an amazing vibe down here. Thank you so much for being included. Woo! I'm back to learning, Cory. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Bit more practice required, get to it, mate. But you are looking absolutely stunning. <laughs> yes. uh, the parade continues. Oh, and not a dumped trolley in sight for the first time. Here's Coles. Oh, oh the there giant we go. table dress setting. Uh, Nate, can I ask a question? Yes. Who would your ultimate queer icon dinner guest be? <gasps> oh, oh, look, that is really, really hard. But I'd have to go, I'm going to lean into the nerds. I reckon Alan Turing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do you know anything about him? Uh, I, I know a little bit. Enigma, Codes, uh, amazing, amazing brain. Okay. Uh, uh, very much a gay man, but after helping essentially save the world in World War II, uh, yeah, he was chemically castrated uh, because people just couldn't get behind. It was illegal, obviously, for people to be gay. And, yeah, but I'd, I'd love to have him around for a chat. Absolutely. Hey, oh, look. Green with Envy, it's Headspace. Yes, and they're all about amplifying young people's voices. Headspace is the National Youth Mental Health Foundation that began in 2006, uh, and it provides early intervention mental health services to 12 to 25 year olds. Such important work. It really, really is. And Head Headspace are there for us. They reckon every year more than 30,000 queer people reach out for support just to Headspace alone. Incredible number. 
Especially Look at that behind them, <gasps> the bubbles. Oh, the party's coming. The party's absolutely coming right down the road, dripping in Ooh. musical notes. It's the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Choir ah. and also Canberra q ah. Do you think they're going to sing? Can we hear? I think Probably they are, but this. I, <laughs> not yes, for this. There is absolutely no way that we're going to hear those voices over the screaming and the music and <laughs> all the celebration here at Taylor Square. Have you ever been part of a choir? I have. That's cool. I, I, I think I've been kicked out of more choirs than I've been a member of. Oh. <laughs> How do you get kicked out of a choir? Oh, they, they just preemptively say, no, not you. Absolutely <laughs> not when they see me coming. Uh, look, here is a queer party if I've ever seen one. It's Puff Duff. Hey, Puff Duff. I, I, I absolutely love that Ottomans this year are getting their own flow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. No, not that sort of Puff Duff. Yeah, no. Absolutely not. No. Look, they're celebrating Pink once again. Hey, Puff is another one of those queer words. Like, like, uh, well, queer, <laughs> and also, like the one I want, fruit, let's bring fruit back. <laughs> Puff is one of those. I think by the end of tonight, we've, we've brought back fruit. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Back. It's one of those things, I can say it, oh, you can say it if you're being nice. Woo! <laughs> oh, get the party started. Get the started. party started. Absolutely. What's your favourite colour there? Jack? I'd have to say pink camo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be pink something. Did you ever you go get to, to wear pink camo in the navy? Pink. <laughs> a butch pink, yes. <laughs> a very butch pink. Maybe more a musk. <laughs> oh, who can do the best Scottish accent? Not oh, me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, with her Highland gathering, it's Miss Scotland. Oh, that was, that was not That's all right. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jack, 100% uh, can tell you, don't ask what's under these kilts. I know. <laughs> You don't want to say we can't. We cannot show it on television. What's under there? What's under <laughs> there? Tell me. Meanwhile, coming in oh. right hot on the heels, University of New South Wales. I love all of the geeks representing. Absolutely. So the Uni of New South Wales, they established the world-renowned Kirby Institute in '86, which was in response to the HIV epidemic. Wow. Uh, that's Puff Duff going behind us. Okay. Yes, we Puff Duff. We're having fun. Thank Trust you. Us, we are. <laughs> but UNSW doing such great work. The symbol is the lion. It's a mascot of university. Um, so you know, you, UNSW pride is exactly what they're talking about. Pride, like lion pride. Did you get it? Yes, yes. Uh, very good. Yes, Nate. Oh, okay. Tell me later. Tell me later. Okay. <laughs> Here's more sport, but I'm going to talk about this one. Uh, I'm going to say, spare you this one, Jack. It's a Sydney Rangers football club wetting the ref referee's whistle. They're dreaming of a world where discrimination in sport is no longer an issue and people of any background are free to express themselves on and off the pitch. I mean, do you know what? Look, I've got a confession. After all this sport talk, I feel like maybe I should find a sport. Well, I think you should. I've got one for you. Absolutely. It's actually, actually, probably the kind of sport that has the most prize money to be won and the most biggest paydays for anyone. That's well. Do, do you know what that is? <laughs> no, it's, I'm waiting. It's You're not ready. tennis. What? Uh, it's not tennis. It's actually. Uh, Video gamers. Oh. Yeah, we're leveling up. Oh. This is the Sydney Gamers. Oh. No, the... I had no idea where you were going with that. Oh. You really did well <laughs> Look, with I, that one. It, I stretched out the segue, though, to make sure that it had the pictures. <laughs> they, the Sydney Gamers create a safe space online and offline for our queer gamers. And there are a lot of us. You know, a lot, a lot of queer people escape into fantasy and find communities that they love, alongside stories that really touch their hearts. And gaming truly can be sports, eSports. Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a huge industry. And getting bigger. <laughs> and their outfits tonight are of their favourite gaming characters as well, like great cosplay outfits. Curvy, I saw a lot of curves. Oh, blooming into their true selves with their cherry blossom inspired float. It's Colourful Change Lab. And they're an international organisation that offers training programs and talk to Japanese companies to educate them about um, LGBTQIA plus topics, which, as we know, is so important. Well, it is important because, you know, sadly in Japan, there are yeah. still laws against gender identity and sexual, area, uh, sexual orientation. Exactly. Again, taking the platform of World Pride to really push that message and, and push the work that they do. It's hey, Japan, cool. are you listening? <laughs> You've been told <laughs> twice now. Yeah. <laughs> So oh. it's a crime to look this. <gasps> no, it really this is. It's Minta Allison. 
Hello. Hello. So they're one of the largest corporate firms in Australia. Riding in the float car, a Mini Cooper, is drag queen from Sydney, Alicia Try. Oh, and do you know what? I do not object to this. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> yeah, you, you're yeah. nailing it, Jack. Can I be a lawyer? Totally Judge Judy. I think you practically <laughs> done that, yeah. Jackie? Yes. You know, if I was served by that drag queen, I, I'd be completely fine with it, to be honest. <laughs> if you were served by that drag queen, Jack, I don't think you'd be walking after No, this. they'd bring me to the filth, wouldn't they? <laughs> I wonder if they then get this as their uniform for the rest of the year. <laughs> yes. Imagine that, if you, if you were able to walk in Mardi Gras, then they went, you know what, we're going to keep that look. I mean, just like this one, a tropical fruit. <laughs> oh, it's your favourite name. Oh, I love a tropical fruit. Yes. And the tropical fruit mob are just stunning. They're amazing. So this is all about love, strength, recovery. The Northern Rivers, we all know it. It has been impacted by two floods in early 2022. Here, hearts represent hope. Yes, and we saw earlier in the evening, the beautiful package that um, was put together where they were talking about what it meant to just be here tonight. Mm. So it's great to see them all marching. We you saw... been to Tropical Fruit? Oh, no. No, me neither. No, no me neither. Least. But I'm 100% it's going in my gay calendar, which is getting incredibly full. <laughs> yes. Jam packed. fantastic to have the, the regional LGBT community represented in Mardi Gras. It absolutely is. Oh, look, they must have followed me all the way from Adelaide, <laughs> South Australian Mardi Gras. Oh, good day, you say? Oh, hello. I hear that it's been a bit hot down there. Oh, yeah, there have been heat waves that time of year. Yes. Come to Sydney for a bit of a cool down with a nice march along Oxford Street. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And so they did. <laughs> Actually, they've come, Jack, to make sure that they can take you home after this. I bet done. they have. Don't worry, I'm coming back. South Australia would dare let talent such as you go. Oh, oh, mate. And I'll make sure I'm back there in November where South Australia or Adelaide Pride at least happens. So you sure, will have to come over and visit for it, eh? I would love that. From the capital of the country, it's the capital queers. Ooh. So this float, as you might guess, is packed with people from Canberra and surrounds. Looks like some, yep, some Canberrans there. Um, <laughs> I can very, you tell. <laughs> <laughs> very strong choreography game from this float. And, and light twirl. Love a twirl, yep. Love a twirl. I wonder if any of them are going to attempt to throw it in the air and catch it. <laughs> Come on, one of you, please. If they want to try throwing it to me, I'll catch it. I yes. want one of those really badly. Woo! Throw it in the air! Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're getting blown kisses. Oh! Wah. How nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, get out the whip. <laughs> My corset is killing me. Oh, I bet. But there is no kink shaming here. This is Fetish Australia. Fetish Australia is a predominantly online group which actively promotes kink and fetish events around Australia and overseas. It's been set up to help queer kinksters connect with events and the greater kink community. We are all sex positive here tonight. Yes. And look, dressed in visions of rubber, leather, whips, Vloggers, pups and pets. <laughs> not literal pups and pets. No, no, not literal <laughs> pups and pets. <laughs> Google it if you like, but um, <laughs> we are 100% kink positive too, and it doesn't matter what you like to get into, as long as you do it consensually and safe. That's right. And look, coming up now, it's the New South Wales Users and AIDS Association who work to increase the health and dignity of people who use drugs illicitly. Tonight they're, tonight they're dressed as harm reduction angels. Oh, I love it. Yes. So their float is their homage to their peers that have gone before them, to their struggles and their efforts to reduce adverse health effects in our community. Hey, this that guy will give them a lesson on the light twirl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very skillful. <laughs> uh, up next, pride in medicine. So this float is made up of. 60 doctors and medical students from all aspects of the rainbow community and of course our allies uh, yes we've got a uh, doctor drag queen playing gp on the truck out of drag though also a gp oh. tom dixon 
Oh, do you know, that's what you want. A uh, drag queen. In, remember, drag queens in emergency. Yes. Even better, drag queen with a medical degree. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> You know, if I knew the scrubs looked like that, I probably would have studied medicine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too... Oh, wait, no, no, never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too late, Nate, don't worry. Yeah, I know, yeah. it's you're, too you're, late. You're, you're far too needed on BTN. But, <laughs> yeah. Look, we, you, even though you didn't get to be a doctor, you get to enjoy a bit of this doctor pride. That's right, and look, this next float is full of people who may have seen you in your birthday suit. It's it's not a congregation of your ex-lovers, it's the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you, you'd be recognised then. They have been very useful <laughs> lately, delivered our little baby very you know, healthily and calmly into the world. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs> Again, another example of fabulous scrubs. <laughs> I know, yeah. scrubs the scrubs tonight. Scrubs. They scrub up quite well, don't they? <laughs> so this next float is the Liberal Party of New South Wales, uh, friends of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, it's interesting, you know, the Liberal Party. Well, a lot of people think of Mardi Gras as the first gay rights demonstration, you know, back in the day in 1978. The very first one was actually in 1971 out the front of the Liberal Party headquarters in Sydney. But it was in support of Tom Hughes, who was a party candidate, who was, um, you know, advocating for gay law reform. Oh, yeah, wow. So that was the very first gay rights demonstration. There you go. Gosh, we love a good history lesson here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Robin Kennedy taught me that. Oh, there you go. See, we learn from our elders. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Is that just a unicorn of the sea strapped to the front of a boat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is. Look at, look at this. So a narwhal in front of a boat with a drag queen and a bunch of hearts. Oh, this must be the Optus Dream Boat. <laughs> <laughs> a sentence I never thought I would say. Oh my goodness. Jeez, she would do well on RuPaul's Drag Race, I reckon. That oh. was a pretty good look. Get you. <laughs> At least you'd probably get reception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and with that with that crown as well, yeah. So one of the entrants on this float is Ellie Cole, a, a Paralympian, after losing her right leg to cancer at age three in 2021. She became Australia's most decorated female Paralympic athlete with a record ranking 17 Paralympic medals and an order of Australia. Well, it's not about how big it really is, how you use it. <laughs> Looking, fetching in Pluro, it's building pride. They're a community group of rainbow individuals and allies from the property and construction industry. We focus on improving the lives of queer people working in the And they are celebrating, they are getting loud absolutely behind us right now. Absolutely. Okay. It's not just the hard hands that are hard, it's also the protective <laughs> shoes. Oh, oh. Feel caps. Okay, so it's Trans Pride Australia celebrating the Gender Kaleidoscope. And they were founded by trans and gender diverse people for trans and gender diverse people and now offer support and education through lived experience to the allies and wider community. Peter Friend was one of the founders of Trans Pride Australia and she is an absolute icon in our community. Stunning. Next, oh, SPS, sex boobs and sock. Oh, wait, no. No, I can see down the bottom there, special broadcasting <laughs> service. Oh, our cousins here in the SPS and NITV, they're fab. The Gay Games are the world's largest inclusive sporting arts and cultural event, and this year it's being held in Hong Kong, which is an incredible win for the LGBTQIA community in the region. Get this, it's the first Asian city to host the Games in its 40-year history. We caught up with them to learn more about this year's games and their float. Gay Games is coming to Hong Kong. So the Gay Games is a nine-day arts and culture and sport festival that will be held in Hong Kong in November 2023. It's been around for 40 years, but the first time in Asia. What we would like to do is to reach out through the unifying power of sports, arts and culture, where people come together, get to know each other and break down stereotypes. I love that Sydney is hosting World Pride. Uh, we will be having a float that will go up Mardi Gras uh, the parade with 40 volunteers marching. The float itself is quite beautiful. Uh, it has the sampan, which is the traditional Hong Kong boat with the colours of diversity. 
Underneath the sampan are two grey hands representing humanity, and alongside this float and alongside the truck will be these beautiful shapes. They're actually the petals of the bohemia flower in Hong Kong. To see these big events such as Sydney World Pride and Gay Games Hong Kong being hosted in the region really shows a lot about how the region is changing and what it means to the LGBTI community. Ah, incredible. Are you, anyone going along, going along to the Gay Games? Yes, oh. yes, 2018 Paris soccer. I actually think we came runners up from memory. Ah, oh, look, now we know how much of a fan I am of boxing. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> it's the World Gay Boxing Championships. And as part of the Sydney World Pride sporting events, there was a gay boxing championships and a match that recently held in Sydney. In it was Sydney. last Sydney. weekend. Yeah, there you go. yeah, incredible. You know, I used to box. Had an amateur boxing bout. Yeah. I love the sports ball and the boxing. Yeah, we're really learning a lot about each other, aren't <laughs> oh we? Oh my gosh. She's just living up to the stereo part. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You know, but it is so fantastic to see all of the sport, sporting organisations and community groups marching tonight because, you know, homophobia and transphobia is a very big thing in sport. So this is just, you know, fantastic visibility to show how inclusive the world really can be. It's also really important to uh, get medical problems looked at. Team, excuse me, hi, uh, can you have a look at this rash? No? No? Never, never, never mind? Hey, we've got time, Nate. Oh. Gosh, fine. Don't think they can hear me anyway. This is GLAD, the Association of LGBTQI Plus Doctors and Dentists. Yes, and I believe that tonight they're also handing out um, doctor's certificates for everyone for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> yeah, Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good on you, doctors. Yes, oh. I'm certainly glad to see them. Right, so get ready to take a trip with Positive no Life New South Wales. In 1988, uh, it was started by those most at risk of HIV and AIDS by sexual and gay men to provide support to those who were impacted by this epidemic. And their very psychedelic inspired float tonight is led by well-known drag queen Vanessa Wagner. Can you spot Vanessa <laughs> I'm from looking, here? I'm looking. <laughs> looking and Hopefully looking. Hopefully we zoom in a little. No, moving on. I love that though, you get to see a good, you get a good feeling about this. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I think we've got more Brazilian Carnival. Oh, sounds like it. This is Materia, Real, Materia 61 Grupo de Samba. Ooh, and can't you hear it? Hey. More ISIS wings as well, Jack. More ISIS wings, and I believe the costumes and the colours are inspired by the ocean. Oh. I love this Carnivale vibe yeah. this year. Like, it's so international, but it's so celebratory. It's just, and to see all the costumes, yes. it's just incredible. Yeah. You know, we thought a lot of work went into what we're wearing, but yes. wow. I know. <laughs> right, marching for equality here, sex workers and community float. Hello. Oh, he hello. <laughs> Oh, money, yes, money, no, money, 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 money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no, no. Okay, we're, we're going to crack on because you're not getting paid any money tonight, Jack. Uh, not at all. When it comes to uh, sex work in this country, we've achieved so much decriminalisation and world-leading anti-discrimination protections in the Northern Territory. And we're in the middle of decriminalising reforms in Victoria. But there's a heck of a lot more to go on in the country. There are discussions, though, here in New South Wales of decriminalisation of sex workers and sex work. Absolutely. Oh, look, one of the signs said, F you pay me, which, <laughs> Nate, if I'm not getting paid tonight, I'll be saying that to the bosses. So many aren't, because what they do is illegal. They can't do anything about it. <laughs> and up next, we've got another uh, Bi Plus f uh, float. So it's Bi Plus Pride, marching as bi and pansexual themed superheroes. Um, bi plus people often face stigma from both sides of our community so if you're in a, a same-sex relationship the opposite side opposite sex side of your attraction is invisible and if you're in an opposite sex relationship your bisexuality is invisible so that's known as bi erasure and this float is really kind of saying nah we exist we're proud. But I've just seen one of the bi plus parts of their peeling off blow kisses at me. That's oh. my, my very special mate, Jax Fenton. Hey, Jax, I look like you're having a great time. But hey, 
shouting from the rooftops. They're the wonderful, proud and free Deloitte Touche Tomatsu. Oh, right in behind by pride there. Having a nice big boogie. Oh, this is an accounting firm. Yes. Oh, okay. oh, can they do my tax? Hey, I've got all my receipts here. <laughs> all right, all right, right. Uh, let's, let's see if Jez, <laughs> Jez can maybe flag one down for you. No, actually, don't worry about it, Jez. He doesn't need financial help. <laughs> uh, what's going on down at the street for you? I am walking in front of a wasteland. Welcome to Use Me Up, Wear Me Out, which could be open to a few interpretations on an event like this. What is Use Me Up, Wear Me Out about? We are about basically the spirit of conservation. So taking trash and literally things that are rejected and reviled and turning into royalty. So I'm a Maharaja. So what's your um, costume made of? I'm, I mean, this is I'm models. His Highness Maharaja Trash Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about old fridges, broken vacuum yeah, cleaners, this is a bottle car. caps? This, this is a car, this is an old fan. These are bottle caps. This is an old vacuum cleaner. Things that we were found. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Have a great night. And you. You look fantastic. Look at this. This is the wasteland. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> hello, hello, how are you? And look, it's Free Gay and Happy. A group started off by Teresa Leggett when her husband came out as gay. And this is a group that's grown and grown over time. And look, I think, oh my God, it's Mel Buttle. What are you doing here? Oh, dance, dance, dance for your life. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant, Mel. Uh, Mel, Mel made it. Made it, Mel made it. <laughs> <laughs> Her first ever Mardi Gras. Oh. Managed to find a float, free, gay and happy. Oh. I don't, th and I don't think- And free, gay and happy she yeah. looks. <laughs> she really, she really. <laughs> happy Mardi Oh my god, I, I'm, I'm going to stand up and give her a wave. I'm definitely going to give her a wave if she comes past. Because I, I, I wanted to know just how proud we are of getting into her first Mardi Gras. It is always so exciting when you get to March. I can't believe she's done it. Right, and now we've got Rainbow Rebellion. They're an Australian arm of Extinction Rebellion's LGBTQIA plus group, and their costumes tonight are a mix of river nymphs, woodland fairies, oh. sun and wind representations, and some forest animals for good measure. Yes, a lot of fairies around tonight. Is that a word we can <laughs> read? Yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. I'm giving you permission. Well, <laughs> poor, even those trees need some more really branched out there oh. was the better joke. I love all these floats bringing an environmental message, you know, into Mardi Gras. Absolutely. It looks well, not at the end. It might look like we've run out of floats, but there's no, more to go. No, no, just, just a bit of a gap. An interval? <laughs> On Taylor Square for now. I think this is where we go down and do our... Oh, no, it's not. It's mini. Just because they're like... Oh, and that's Maxi Cooper? Shield. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> no. Mini Cooper's the float. <laughs> <Or> yeah. <laughs> That's Maxi Shield. Wow, that person's very tall. <laughs> what what insightful commentary, Jack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> say what you see. That's oh, what I say. You know I see right a now. rainbow mini. <laughs> oh wow. Love story. Oh, Ben. <laughs> Do you think they're taking requests? <laughs> Not entirely sure they're even playing. <laughs> you can see, see these gaps that happen from time to time. Because you know, some are too fast, some are too Is this just when you dance? Like just have a little dance kind of interview? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's just like, you know, when you're on a freeway and all of a sudden you're stuck in traffic and the next minute it's all of a sudden clear and you can go on. That's exactly what is going on here. And I want to bark at the, at the oh, everything around us here. <laughs> this is the Oceanic Pup and Handlers. We're back to the future. <laughs> oh, oh back to the future. All right, so <laughs> they know we love a pun up here. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been talking about pups before. Here is a group of pups and their handlers as well. Ah. Did they bring the... Um, Doggy bags? They 100% probably would have, I hope, I reckon. Look, either way, it's awesome. 
Ah. Yes. Ah. Look, I'm just happy it's not me making that joke. <laughs> <laughs> It's not guaranteed that their bark is worse than their bite. Huh. Wow, look at those furs. I love furries. I just want to go up and like stroke them, don't you? That's the whole yes. point. <laughs> so it's the Oz furs. Um, Fershin? What do you reckon? Definitely Fershin. Yeah. 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 So we are solidly in kink territory here, people, and we are all for it. These folks have been in the Mardi Gras since 2001. That's a very long time. <laughs> Wait, did you say a very long time? Yes. <laughs> Mom, shut up. That is a living breeze. <laughs> I thought I was just dealing with Jack. <laughs> I've stopped. I don't know if you've noticed. Not, I, I, I know when to stop with my part. I can't imagine how hot they would be in those. Oh, yeah. Yes. Panting way. They, yeah. they, like, and, and you talk about our costumes and so many other people's costumes taking a lot of work. That is incredible. Oh, incredible. What have we got, a crocodile? He looks like he's had it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, presenting Pride Without Barriers, it's Life Without Barriers coming up now. Uh, a so Life Without Barriers is a social purpose organisation supporting people with disability and mental illness. Children, young people, families, older people, refugees, asylum seekers, they're there to help. There's an 11 year old on this float tonight as well, called Chloe. Um, and she helped with Life Without Barriers a choreo. Um, oh. She's been hosting virtual dance classes for them, uh, for their employees. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, I would be mistaken if this wasn't the gymnastics team with the <laughs> ribbon twirling. I could earn your life without barriers, breaking them down. That's what we want to do. That's why it's pride without barriers. And actually talking about breaking down barriers, mental health is something we are all learning a lot more about. And here, a very important quote beyond you know, the, the well-known Australian mental health and wellbeing support organisation that provides information and support to help all people in Australia achieve their best possible mental health, whatever their age, you know, whatever they need. LGBT, LGBTQIA plus people in our community are at a greater risk of, of mental health concerns and it's not because that's the way we're born, it's because of the stigma and discrimination that we face in society that makes us like that. So, you know, the more progress we make, the less of that we're going to see. And the more visibility we have for organisations like this and the more we talk about it as yeah. well and make it the norm. It's right. To be open about how we're feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Talking about the importance of visibility as well, after the 2022 parade, they absolutely got a marked increase in calls to their support service. And so here we have the, the Pinnacle Foundation, the Pinnacle of Education. It's the Pinnacle Foundation float. Um, they raised funds to provide scholarships and mentoring for queer youth um, to complete their studies. Fantastic. And look, they're all graduating tonight as well, I feel. This organisation also really supports people from rural and regional areas. 50% of the recipients of their scholarships are from rural and regional Australia. Oh, very, oh, very. More confetti. Oh, and sticking with the theme of education, it's New South Wales Department of Education. <laughs> we are getting school tonight. <laughs> yeah, we sure are. Wow, more puppets. Everybody loves oh, puppets. Everybody loves puppets. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh wow. Where did they find that tree? <laughs> Where did they find it? <laughs> All right, Jack. Back to school for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our next float is filled to the brim with some of our favourite TikTok stars. Simzy is on the street. Who have you managed to meet down there? That's right. I'm here with TikTok superstars Sugar and Spice and Bambi Ferry. Bambi, you have millions of fans across the world. How does it feel to be representing the trans community on a global scale? It feels incredible. It's my first Mardi Gras, my first Sydney World Pride ever, and I'm just so proud to be here. I love you. 
We're so happy to have you here. And Sugar and Spice, I've been rooting for you. You're my, I'm a total fan favorite. It must be so amazing to be experiencing this together as twins, as siblings, besties. Yeah, it is so fun. I mean, double the trouble to the max. I mean, this is our first time abroad. We never left the country before. So what better place than to be in Sydney World Pride? Come on. I mean, Sugar says double the trouble, but I think we're definitely twice as nice. And especially down in Aussie, we're down under vibes down under. Well, enjoy the rest of Pride. Stay safe. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, sugar and spice from this very season of Drag Race. I'm sorry, I'm right now. I haven't watched tonight's episode for obvious reasons. No, me neither. No spoilers, <laughs> spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> Guys, Warhol and Lichtenstein, eat your heart out. Here we have the Oz Queer Hag. Oh, hey, hey. These costumes are popping. Pop up, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, you've got oh, it. I'm back on the puns and you're not on Damn. my side now. Come on. <laughs> wow. Interestingly, they changed their name from the Oz Fag Hags to the Oz Queer Hags oh. in the spirit of inclusion. Oh, thanks, oh. Pete. Hags are for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Not, not just the fags. <laughs> oh, I love it. It doesn't feel so transgressive even now to still have those words taken back, but gosh. Love it, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, bunch of fruits. Oh. And, oh, and here representing the Jewish LGBTQIA plus community of Sydney, it's Dianu. And Dianu, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I believe it's, um, it translates to, it would have been enough. I, I learned that today, so I thought I would share it with you all. Thank you. There you go. Um, and they're, as I mentioned, a Jewish group. Um, they nourish the ongoing conversation across the spectrum of religious observation from secular to orthodox. Do you guys want to Yeah. Caffeine, please. Oh, 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 oh. We are definitely in need of staying awake. <laughs> yes, if you're just tuning in, the parade is still very much going. <laughs> Come on. We need caffeine. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, this, uh, this will help you if you have a bit. The next float, wild about you equals you. This is the Institute of Many. Look, if you haven't heard about it, you equals you. Uh, it, it's so important, it means an undetectable viral load when we're talking about HIV and therefore AIDS. Undetectable means untransmittable. Excellent, and their float tonight is native Australiana themed with lush native flora and a giant neon U equals U lights. Hey team, U equals U. Oh, look, they're all dressed they're, they're wonderfully. I mean, I'm on board. Hey look, oh, there's look the crowd. crowd. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> That's just right next to us. You can see we've obviously got another little break. It's that, it's that little bit later on in the parade when those uh, phantom traffic jams start rocking up. But that's okay, because here come the next mob. Oh, okay. Always a spectacular float. It's Sydney queer Irish. Shout out to Tara and her Irish family watching oh. at home. Schlonta, I believe. Schlonta. Schlonta. Oh, everyone. What's cheers. Schlonta? Yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Can you to Sydney Queer Irish. Oh, I hope they're having some good crack tonight. I've seen plenty of good crack tonight. I <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> Too cheeky? Oh, see? Oh, was a, keep it coming. I, I took it a step further. <laughs> oh. Mate. But I'm having a guess. Oh. Yeah, I don't even know if that's... Hang on. Is that are one? those wigs turning into halves? They wow. certainly are. Oh, wow. In this case, I think it'll be a beard as well. I did dye my hair green in honour of St Patrick's Day, which is coming uh, up soon. Oh, there you go. You don't want to get caught <laughs> without any green. <laughs> These costumes are incredible. They are. And I they must them. be incredibly heavy to carry. I reckon I reckon there is some... Well, I can see there's a, a uh, bit of structural engineering going on. Uh, and maybe a harp player helping as well. Yes. I mean, Mardi Gras is all about support. So may as well support your harp yep. headpiece. <laughs> Oh, you're drawing a long bow, but you don't need a bow with a harp. I don't know, there's something there. All right. <laughs> but we can swing right past that because, uh, well, we've got more sports coming up. Jack, I'm not even going to bother. I'm handing this one to you. Oh, another sport. Well, that's right. right. I don't mind this sport because it's got a shuttle cock oh. involved. So oh. uh, I believe we've got the shuttle swingers women's badminton. Certainly do. Look at this rain. Is this a rainbow shuttlecock? Oh, wow. wow. That's the largest shuttlecock <laughs> I've, uh, I've ever seen. <laughs> Not the biggest I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe also, and, and I'm probably 
not correct in this at all, but they're dancing in the formation of badminton moves, such as smash, a run-up, a backhand, full circle turn, Terms I'm literally just reading off a piece of paper <laughs> because as we've established tonight, I'm you not me. exactly the... You oh, thank me. you, Mon. That's all I care about is I'm fooling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> should probably stop telling people that, that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Coming up behind them, I can see the signs, the Flying Bats Football Club. The Flying Bats are the largest lesbian and inclusive footy club in the world. I used to play for them. I played oh. for them for like six seven years. Um, only reason I stopped playing is because I left the suburb. Oh, oh. oh right, wait, wait, so footy round ball? Round ball, soccer. Right, soccer. Oh, uh, but most of our international guests know it is football, right? So yeah, yeah. All good. I have a very important question about mm -hmm. um, the flying bats. Don't all bats fly? I know, I know. <laughs> apparently though, apparently oh. the name um, was come up with years ago when folks were walking. No, actually, I've heard two different stories. It was a flying, <laughs> bats flying in the sky above the ground where they were training. So hey, ah. the flying bats, let's call ourselves that. But um, they're a very inclusive club of people right across the gender spectrum. Their only condition is they play in a women's league. But if you feel comfortable playing in that team, then you can. Oh, that sounds amazing. Hey, Jez, you're still on the street. What is happening down there? It is everyone is everyone's just having such a great time. I want to pay tribute though to some people whom this event wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for their goodwill, the volunteers of Mardi Gras. This is Craig. Craig, how's your night going so far as a volunteer? It's been going absolutely fantastic. The audience has been wonderful for us. You must be uh, quite pleased to be back on Oxford Street. It is. The SCG was nice, but it's nice to be back at a traditional home. It's kind of symbolic, isn't it? It is. It is. We're back on home turf. We're claiming the streets again like the 78ers did. What does your job involve? My job involves looking after our audience to make sure they have a great night, they stay safe, uh, we give them the information they need and keep them positive. What would you say the mood is like down here? It's electric, sometimes a little overwhelming, but just a fantastic vibe from thousands of people on the streets. I've seen a few people getting a bit emotional as well. It's quite moving in, in parts, isn't it? It is. Um, Mardi Gras means so many different things to so many people. Um, a lot of community groups coming together. It's, it's a time for them to be themselves and be unashamedly themselves. Craig, happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Yes, oh, it's, I love the volunteers. The number of people that come together to make this parade happen. And it's for no other reason than pride. Absolutely. Oh, look, and here they come running, or at least walking fast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the gods and goddesses of the track, the Sydney frontrunners, joined by the international frontrunners. Oh. Yeah. Although you would be love. mistaken because they are just sort of walking. <laughs> I, I guess I guess you can't run as if everything else is happening. You'll you'll see them down at park runs and, and all all over the place. The front run, front runner groups are always representing a pride as well. Absolutely, and I, I believe that um, Adelaide actually has a contingent of front runners. So if you are listening, um, how do I sign up, or are we just meant to run into I each know. other? Google it. <laughs> oh, that was a pun, Jack. I mean, I tried to make one. a joke there, mate. But yeah. Oh, were you? It's all right. Oh, what? It's all right. We're looking at... That's all right, next year. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I want to absolutely have... No, give, give me your joke. Set me up again. Oh, Do look, we're too far ahead. We're up to Google. You right. know, we're looking at Google right now. Google's data has revealed that the search interest in the term LGBTQIA plus friendly has soared by 1,200% uh, over the past five years. So does that show that we are becoming a more queer-friendly society if people are wanting to know how we can do that? Mon, did you Google that? Ah! <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, we love a bit of Kylie, don't we? <laughs> Definitely do. It's amazing. I know, I know there's a lot of concern about big data, but when you start getting big data, you can find facts out like that, right? Yep. Some information starts falling out, and you can maybe say, oh, hey, Things are changing. Are they changing for the better or for the worse? Well, that's something for the social scientists to figure out. But you can definitely figure out what's happening when you start to know what people are searching for. Hello, Governor. It's the oh. British Eye <laughs> Commission. Oh, oh. oh now Mom's on the job. <laughs> Thank you. So, marching are a group of staff, family, and friends from the British High Commission and consulates, and some members from the British Council in Australia as well. Hi. 
Hello. <laughs> oh, I bet they're dying for a cup of tea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a bicky? Yeah. yeah. Is that it? No? That's... <laughs> <laughs> G'day UK and welcome, welcome to Mardi Gras and of course to World Pride. Uh, and next up we have Western Sydney University, um, a leader in sexuality and gender diverse research in Australia. There we go. Which is interesting, you know, because when you think of the marriage equality postal vote, I think the greatest number of no votes came from Western Sydney. So it's interesting that they're, you know, they're smashing it when it comes to research yeah. communities. Great to see. Uh, bit of Shania. <laughs> Shania. Uh, up next, swishy there. Capes in the wind. It's out for Australia. This organisation is dedicated to supporting and mentoring aspiring LGBTQIA plus professionals as they navigate their way through the early stages of their career. They're repping cages tonight with printed statements on the back to out for and then blank, right? So they then filled in that blank with a statement of their ah. choice. Ah, oh, nice one. Yes, yeah, so see if you can spot any of there. Stop twirling! Stop twirling! <laughs> <laughs> What if it says I'm out for twirling, though? Uh, well, <laughs> then, twirl stop away, them. twirl away. <laughs> I'm out for fairy lights, I'm out for sequin pants. <laughs> it's a good reminder, though, that people are out for so many different things. We're all here for our own reason. Celebrating 50 years of union action for LGBTQIA plus rights, it's Union Pride. This float's inspired by pink bands, which were strikes by the Builders Labourers Federation, so they've gone with an all pink construction. On strikes, we went pink. <laughs> <laughs> the striker pose is nice. <laughs> they should come up and host this. Yeah, they should. <laughs> ah, I think this. Here come the gay trainees. <laughs> and I do believe that is a full loop strapped on at the front. What? Oh, uh, yeah. There's a portal loop. That is a work with a portal loop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very convenient. Actually, can you just stop for one second and I'm going to run up this <laughs> up. Oh, no, no, they've, they've gone past. There you go. Look, look, I'm hoping that's secure, but since they are gay trading. I love these hats. It's they look fantastic. Get in, tradies. It's really cool, those fluoro colours and neon lit hard hats. I'd definitely trade one of my hats for theirs. <laughs> Men, women, everyone in between. It's beautiful to see. Absolutely. Absolutely loving it. And what a smart idea. March up Oxford Street. Although I would not want to be in that for the body. <laughs> but the portal is very smart. It's very <laughs> smart. Yeah, very smart. <laughs> Meanwhile, here, a real deal royalty. It's Asian marching boys and friends. Oh. Now they aim to promote the visibility and acceptance of gay Asian men and their friends oh. in Australia. And it's all royal themed tonight. And oh my oh, gosh. Wow. Look at the gold. Complete with crown and seven. A lot of bling. So much bling. How much and do you think they spent on the jewels? <laughs> Probably worth an entire kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Or queendom. Queendom. Taxes yeah. went up in that kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> we see again those rainbow flames. The crowd here still absolutely loving it. Getting all in a spin. Oh, I love this. Oop, there it is. It's Poop <laughs> Force Australia. Yeah. This bunch of talented hoopers have been providing a safe space for people to express themselves through hula hoop dancing, regardless of their gender and sexuality, for 11 years. There you go. That is, well, obviously, if you've got a boot, a, a, a body, and you can put a hoop around it, you should be out of hula hoop. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be inclusive here. Sounds perfect. <laughs> On your hoop force. Oh, look at that. More. More fireworks. Oh, incredible. Oh, they're, they're so fun. <laughs> Actually, it's starting to get a little bit chilly here tonight in my shirt sleeves. Could you pop the fire back on? <laughs> Would you mind? Just keep dancing. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. dancing. <laughs> Do you know the plural for hula hooping? 
No. Oh, well, the, 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 it's called hooping. The hooping, not hula hooping. hooping. No, I believe, fun fact, the official term for hula hoop <laughs> dancing is hooping. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Hooping. I think we've gone completely off the rails. <laughs> 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 but next year, oh, check out the P I N K F L A M I N O G O S. <laughs> Nearly got there. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> Jack, what does that stand for? Oh, okay, I'll do. <laughs> the politically inspired, non-violent, kind, and fabulous LGBTQIA plus and allies marching in notorious group of satirists. Wow, let's just go with what? pink flamingos. What? Wow, yeah. Let's just okay. go with pink flamingos. Drew horned in for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, everyone on this next float has a real sweet tooth. Oh. It's Candyland, which is a famous oh. dance party held here in Sydney. Let's just watch this. This is going to be sexy. Oh, wow. Kylie again. Oh, you know, she's, she's popular right now. <laughs> yeah, you surprised? Uh, after <laughs> last night. Oh, my gosh. The first thing I did when I got up this morning. What? Was crack, crack into phone. eye view and had take a look back. Ah. Yeah, at the concert. But live and proud. So good. What if any of these candy dancers we are on stage? Hire them, hire them now! I believe. So, yes, this next float is representing the Chinese LGBTQIA community. It's the Chinese Pride float. Their floats draw an inspiration from the lotus flower, and they said that like this holy flower, we can all rise above worldly obstacles and achieve spiritual awakening. And I believe also their costume design, there's three distinct costumes, a male design, a female, and a non-binary. Oh. oh, awesome. Uh, can you tell them apart? I, no, which is kind of a beautiful <laughs> thing, really. That's true, that's very true. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Like, clothes don't have a sex. They can't, they don't have a gender. It's no. just material. Oh, this next bloke has the golden ticket. It's little creatures. Willy Wonka inspired. It's spring confetti, which we have been told is biodegradable. Yes. I don't think they allow non-biodegradable confetti or glitter in Mardi Gras. I hope no one's sneaking it in. <laughs> oh, there is, oh, yeah, there is some very, uh, very excited participants at the moment. Because, like, can you believe? Like, we are still going. This has been a team. I just had a sneaky look at the time. Yeah. It's 10 to 11. Oh, it's yeah. way past my bedtime. It is. <laughs> it is, Jack. But it's okay. We're, the energy, the excitement, we're keeping you up. We're not that far off the end, but oh my God. Come on. Come oh. on. Can I talk about this oh. one? These are oh, your people. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. So this is the itty bitty titty committee. Uh, you'll need shoes on walking around this next <laughs> float because they're dressed as Lego characters with Lizzo emblazoned on their shirts. <laughs> I can say that. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for other people to say that, but that I is I thought it incredible. was a typo at first, <laughs> to well, be honest. What a way to reclaim a slur. Oh, that honestly. is fantastic. So one of the floats in this year's parade is not only marching to amplify an underappreciated part of our community, but they're also gunning for a record. Have a look at this. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. Being a drag king means to me the chance to play with gender, masculinity. Expanding the definition of masculinity to a point in which it's completely undefinable and embracing the fact that men can be really, really fabulous at times. I mean, look at all this. For me, it was finding a place in the queer community, which can sometimes be very overwhelming. It's exploring identity, it's being who I am, it's mixing the best and worst parts of myself and bringing it together on stage in a way that is like, approachable, funny, and also, honestly, being a drag king to me is banter. It's a bit of fun. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. 
Drag kings have been underappreciated for a really long time. And part of being involved in Mardi Gras this year is bringing kings together from all around Australia and showing the strength in numbers. Like this scene is thriving and it is about time that people started paying attention. And I thought the best way to do this is why don't we break a world record? <laughs> so, the record they're trying to break tonight is the most drag kings gathered at once. Currently held by New Zealand with 28 kings. Zinzi, you're down there. Have they done it? Oh my gosh, I'm clicking everywhere. I'm in queer heaven. So many kings. They did it. I counted 80. It's amazing. They broke the record. Woo! Yeah. 81. Awesome. 81. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gorgeous sir. Oh, oh why, thank you. Oh. What's your drag name? Um, Luke Warm tonight. Oh. oh, no, 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 no need. No, no, you already come with the drag name. Oh, what? It's Mon Shaft. Oh, I'm going to no. shaft her. Shaft her, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's built in, Mon. It's built in. <laughs> hey, while, while Zins is doing all of the clicking, Equality Australia wandered on past and, and we've also seen the Trans Australia and the Allies, and now you are unique. Certainly are. Wow, look at that. That's right. Definitely <laughs> down. Okay, so it's another solo marcher. I love how so many people this year have oh. been coming down solo. Good on you. Um, their costume's inspired by Queen Elizabeth I of England in 1565 with a huge ruffle collar, a paper mache headdress, all complete with a model of the Opera House and a rainbow on top. Yeah. That's spectacular. So, so just subtle. Something yeah, quite subtle, subtle yeah. for the, for the occasion. <laughs> So Nikki's a fashion designer and spent four months creating the costume, which took 175 hot glue sticks to assemble it. And <laughs> their sewing machine broke down twice. <laughs> and how many burns to the finger from those hot glue Oh. <laughs> Incredible, absolutely. It's strutting down Incredible. Australia's longest catwalk. Oh, too. yes, very much so. Oh, hello, hello. We all know that, well, Jack's got his sport, Mom's got a, oh, their uh, individual, uh, People barging on yeah, their own. Yeah. For me, it's all, it. no, all about the kink tonight. The Studio Kink and the Sydney Fetish <laughs> Community. Uh, there are a bunch of LGBTQIA plus kink and fetish instructors who deliver classes on everything from yoga to sexual communication skills, shibari to leather craft. Oh. Well, whatever you need to learn, I they've got my, you covered. I think my kink might be rainbow flames. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, every time I see it, it's going to be you and half of Sydney into that after tonight. Yeah. We're going to have to figure out how to do it on the cheap, though, because cost of living prices. You can't have something that big in the house for us. I said, when it comes to kink, people in the kink community are used to getting laughed at and made fun of, but there's really nothing wrong with it. You don't know until you've tried it, right? It's safe and consensual. That's what you need. Oh, can I say a big Kia Ora? It's Hucker for Life. And that is across the ditch. Hucker for Life raise awareness for suicide prevention in our communities, uh, in, in their communities, including the LGBTQIA+, or the Taka Tatui, Taka Tatui, which is a Maori word for LGBTQIA+. Again, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Look at the focus on that. Yeah. Oh, I think we're flashing back, back to the kids. That was that <laughs> name. That was just the name. Meanwhile, team, out of the parliament, into the streets. That's what they yelled the first uh -huh. time round. <laughs> well, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> That's what they should have. Here's the Greens. The New South Wales Greens, specifically. But, it, and you know, the Greens, obviously, a global political party dedicated to four things. Grassroots, democracy, ecological sustainability, peace, non-violence and social justice. Yeah. Bob Brown back in the day, pioneering gay man. It's quite fitting, they're all wearing green. <laughs> that would have been an easy <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. With a creative take on the theme Australiana, it's My People, My Tribe. They're a community group proudly founded by queer people for queer people, and their custom costumes feature the work of queer Indigenous artist Indiot, a proud Waramai Serapi man living on Gadigal lands. Apologies if I mispronounce that. And the designers. 
this cool so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You can live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing a haka behind me. I'm oh. slightly distracted. <laughs> now, team, team. Yeah. You're not exhausted, are you? Oh. No. Are you ready for more? Yeah. yeah. Like, 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 should we do another couple hundred floats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Or, or maybe, maybe, maybe just one more. One more? One yeah, more. yeah. Right. Can you believe? Are you serious? We are almost at the end of Mardi Gras, but not yet. There is still something stunning for us to feast our eyes on to finish things off. And that's the committee project to recreate Tom, an icon, a legend. In the background. Happening right now, right behind me. But here on your screens, the man himself, Tom of Finland. That's me. And what is that? That's just a little bit naughty. <laughs> It, look, you would, you would know Time of Finland, uh, the, the work, the artwork, just really iconic when it comes to the gay community. Oh, as the, as the last of folks are going through Taylor Square, they are loving it. They know they're at the end of the parade, so they are getting loud. Meanwhile, the Time of Finland people, they're getting huge and <laughs> sexy. Yes. Oh, somebody turn up the sparkler. <laughs> we, were, we were looking at that. Don't get it too close to that giant puppet. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely not. That oh, thing would go up straight away. Absolutely. I can't believe it. That is officially the last float. Wow. That is it, team. That was Mardi Gras 2023. That was Mardi Gras. <laughs> and look behind us right now. There goes Tom of Finland. Tom of Finland. It is really. Oh, look at that. Right. Butt. Look at the oh, butt. Oh, and the butt. I didn't cheeks. see the buttocks before. Very cheeky. <laughs> oh, so stunning. <laughs> Incredible. Wow. More than wow. 100 floats. More than 200. Wow. It's quite epic. It's Hours. Quite epic. Hours we've been at this. Look at the fireworks yeah. celebrating the end. Yeah. The last float. But the Marching. party is just getting started, right? Yeah. The parade oh, is winding oh. up. Now the night begins. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. This is this is just the uh, really boring official stuff. <laughs> now, <laughs> from here, party starts, team. <laughs> but wow, Tom of Finland making it through Taylor Square there. Oh, look. oh we've oh, got we've confetti falling on us <laughs> here in the studio. <laughs> Oh, what, what uh, an epic night. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, oh, uh, wow. Well, team, that's it from us for tonight. I'm so sorry. I want the rainbows and sparkles to continue as that final float makes its way down Flinders Street. We're going to have to bid you farewell for another year. And look, we've done it in style, and I'm not just talking about our outfits. Of course, we've been blessed to be joined by our roving reporters, oh. Lindsay, Mel, and Jez. There were over 200 floats, but that just flew by. I'm sad the parade is over for another year. Oh, no, don't fear, Mon, because there is plenty more queer content on the ABC this month. We had the Sydney World Pride opening concert last night, which is on iView now. Amazing set by our queen, Kylie. Definitely worth the watch. Absolutely, our queen. And we've got the rest of Sydney World Pride covered right across the ABC, particularly ABC Listen, ABC iView. To get the full buffet, just head to abc.net.au slash Sydney World Pride. And, and there's this lot of going, that's where they're going now, I think. And yeah. there's heaps of content on our social platforms as well. If you don't already follow ABC Queer on Instagram, do it right now. Right, well, I think that's it from us now. So, should we go? Yeah. Which one of you was in charge of the after party tickets? I'm joining this lot. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah. Happy Mardi Gras! Happy Mardi Gras! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Oh my gosh! Oh, look at this, party bash, party bash! Oh. <laughs>